Happy weekend. Let's go. Time to sink some Japanese shipping. Where am I at, folks? It says we're taking damage, sir. When was that? Am I under attack right now and don't know it? <laughs> look at that. Anyway, let's look at the map and see why it would say something like that. Head slow, two thirds ahead. Let's see what my current orders are. I gotta get back into the swing of things. I discontinued this game a couple odd days ago. Um, the 8th, I think, was the last day. The morning of the 9th. The, um... Yeah, 10th and the 11th I didn't stream. That's Wednesday and Thursday night. So my orders are to engage and destroy enemy merchant shipping in the Salibis. Sounds good. How are we with torpedoes? It looks like I've done some damage out there. I just sunk a couple of life rafts the last time out, looks like. So, where do I want to be? Probably closer to Neos Wendy. Let me cut across the sea here. And the reason for being is I'm probably going to be out of torpedoes pretty soon here. I'll patrol through here at night. One thing I never find when I search the area of these little islands, and I, and I expected to find maybe fishing boats to engage with my, um, my guns versus the torpedoes. So let's take inventory. I've got more than three quarters to tank of gas, so plenty of diesel, and let's go to time compression. That's that number you see in the extreme lower right hand corner of the screen. Um, okay, radar contact 032. It's a warship going from medium to fast. What's the sea state? Okay, you guys, maybe you can't see it so well with these graphics, but it's, uh, there's a haze out there. The ship, it's, the, that ship's gonna have to be very close to see me. Is my radar running? Yes, it is. Let's get all this stuff set up, by the way. When you first load in, your views are a little, the default views aren't good, and you have to kind of tune it, you know, to get everything where you want it, where you can reach it, and see this light, and so forth, so. I've done that little bit of housekeeping. That warship is clueless. You just kept on to the southwest while I'm going to the northeast. Good, and it saved me having to dive. An unidentified message received? That's a new one. Let's go see what it says in the captain's log. Somebody said, what has God wrought? God has wrought me. Have you seen the damage I've been doing? Anyway... Speaking of which, let me go look over here. I, um, War Patrol report. I'm up to seven ships at 30,000 tons. Does that seem right? And plus an aircraft, yeah. So this all is up to date. Let's go back to time compression. Clarification received. It says, previous message commemorates the centennial of the telegraph. Okay, now that's pretty damn cool. On May 25, 1944, the U.S. Navy's got a little bit of a sense of humor, and the previous message must mark the 100-year anniversary of the telegraph. It's invention, quite possibly. So, that means May 25, 1844 was when the telegraph was invented, and that would kind of make sense just barely predates the American Civil War. I know when the American Civil War was, a, you know, in full swing, they were building the Transcontinental Railroad, and uh, they were using telegraphs to communicate. All right, hang on a minute now. There's an enemy convoy. 
I'm going to put a marker there in its approximate location. Northwest at medium speed at 2220 hours. So I got to make a note of that. And I do have a second computer over here. It's actually the computer that's handling the streaming overhead. And I will also need a calculator. Yeah, I kind of don't need that as much, but it's it's there. Um, okay, 22.20 hours. Mark 1. The reason I'm doing that is because once I uh, start tracking that convoy on radar, I'll compare that position with his previously reported position, and I'm going to be able to compute the speed of that convoy by using the distance in time. So if you know the distance something has traveled and how long it took it to travel that distance, you can, you can calculate the time with a simple formula. Oh, distance equals speed times time. I actually use a, um, let's speed up to standard speed. There's a website called Calculator Soup that I use to make those computations because it's just really simple and I like it. Okay, so I plotted a course. First I'm going to intercept the projected course that this convoy is going to take and then I'm going to turn down the convoy's course towards it head on. I will have much advance notice though. What's the sea state? It has smoothed out tonight. That's good. So it's going to be a night submerged attack when the time comes. All right, so we have radar contact at 23.34 hours. And I'm going to plot a line, the approximate distance traveled which is approximately 10.8 nautical miles. So I'm gonna pull up calculator soup. Well, I gotta look at the time now. That's 23.34. And that difference in time is going to be 14 minutes shy of an hour, so that's 46 minutes. At 10.8 nautical miles. Calculator soup to the rescue. Calculatorsoup.com distance 10.8 nautical miles. I'm going to compute for knots. And they traveled that distance in 46 minutes. Calculate gives me 14 knots. Wow, did I get that calculation right? Or is, is my simple math not good? Oh no, my math is way off on this. Hang on a minute. I'm so stupid, I need to go back to school. That's one hour and 14 minutes, so that's 74 minutes. That's gonna, I was gonna say 14 is way too fast. I miscalculated the time. That comes in at 8.75 knots. Probably they're doing 9. But when I go to set up my torpedo solutions, knowing the speed with some degree of precision is going to be helpful. So that's the reason why I, I take put these marks on the map and take these measurements. So now what I have to do... Well, let's erase these extra marks. And you can see my projected path of travel. I'm seeing their marks on the plot because of the radar information that I have. So let's see if that gets it a little more centered up on it. Yeah, a little bit better. Probably I could improve that just a tiny bit. Scooch that over here. That's good. Um, 
I now know that they are probably about 16 nautical miles away from me, so they can travel at least 12 miles before they're close enough to see me. So what I will do... is I'll travel half of that distance... Not even. I'm going to play it safe. I, I want to get set up, believe it or not, for a stern attack. And I want to turn off the radar because they will begin to detect that radar. Right now they know that radar signal is out there, but it's more distant, so they don't react like there's a submarine there. But if it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, they will know that I'm approaching and they will detect it. So I want the radar off. I know where they are and I know they're coming. And I'm going to want to be from the middle of their track, probably a distance of about, I'm going to say one nautical mile off of their path. Or possibly maybe only even half of that. So what I'm going to do is plot a course about like this. And for this last little part of it, I will submerge. And by then, I'm going to start hearing these ships underwater with my underwater microphones called hydrophones. I'm going to be, you know, you'll, you'll see little black lines appear on the map. Right there. Right about where I thought I would be when, I, when I'd start picking them up. Okay, so let me go to periscope depth. Okay, so right now, I'm at periscope depth. And I'm continuing to position my vessel to prepare for a stern torpedo tube attack. I'm going to use up the stern tubes. And, um... Oh, look, at there's radio traffic. Anything interesting? No. Okay, so we're going to go back to time compression here. They're still a long ways out. They're way too far away to detect me. Even with sonar. Okay, right about now... I'm going to slow to one-third speed. Because they are, they're close enough to hear, for me to hear them, they may be able to hear me. And I don't want them to pick up the sound of my screws underwater, so we slow it down. And I have reached my last waypoint, and the ship automatically comes to a stop. Relieve the watch. They're way down here. Moving along at 8.75 knots, or thereabouts. So what I'm going to do is um, order my crew, rig them for, have them rig for silent running. When we get a little closer, I'll order battle stations to put everybody on alert. And I'm just going to use time compression to bring them in closer and just save this time. All right. Now at this point... What's basically happening is there's an enemy. This is the this is the enemy formation in this area, but they got a lead destroyer right about here, and then they have a destroyer here and a destroyer here. And these destroyers are heading, you know, up this line that I've plotted. So what you need to do is avoid being detected by this this middle destroyer, but before this destroyer here reaches you, this guy here is going to be coming in this direction, right? Right about here. Before he gets close enough to detect you, um, you want to initiate your attack. You want to perform your attack. So what I'm going to do for right now is sound uh, general quarters. What's up, Chuckles Beard? Silent running, sir. Oh, yeah, over there drinking. Breaking whiskey glasses and shit. Against the side of the hull of the submarine from the inside. Here we are, destroyers. Come kill us. So this is a pretty good attack setup. I'll actually save it in case it goes south, though. Have a save point. All right. They're not close enough for me to see. I'm, on a, I'm not going to go to very fast time compression, but a little bit.
Oh, shit. How do they see me? Why didn't it... It didn't even show those markers here. That's why you save game. Let me load it. In case the game glitches like that, and suddenly these guys that are a mile, you know, three miles away are suddenly on top of you. In time compression, that'll happen. It'll skip. And that's quite normal. And what sucks about reloading a save point is I might load back in and that whole formation won't even be there. God, I had Yamato the other day. My sonars, uh, they could be pinging, but um, it's supposed to jump out of time compression to let you know that you've been detected. All right. Let's zoom back in. I'll actually take a look. I can also listen for myself. Let me reset the view. If you're behind to my left. I think... Let me check general quarters. I'll secure from battle stations, that's fine. I'll go ahead one third. I should still be silent running. It didn't... I don't remember it happening 17 years ago when I used to really play this game very seriously. They're at about 235. Let's go look at two, three, five. Where's the warship at? There's supposed to be a warship out here in an escort. I don't see the warship. Oh, that's why he got me. He was really close. It'll show him on plot. See, he's zigzagging widely. Which torpedo tube is my homer? Ten. I might fire my homing torpedo at him. Is that Minikaze? Five feet of depth is probably okay. I will go to minimum... I'll go four feet. Which one is that? Single stacker, dual tripods. No, it's not as a dual stacker. Is it a Sashio? I think it's a Sashio. I'm almost certain that's a Sashio. They're all similarly sized, so it's probably not going to be a big deal. I'm just going to throw some numbers out here for now. He's cruising around. He's probably sped up to 14 knots. Let's calculate a solution on him. How fast does Plot think he's going? Plot's got him at 15, which is probably correct. I'm going to go ahead and fire. So I'll fire away that homing torpedo and see if it gets at him. Is there anybody else to my left side over here, which is 270 relative? Yes, he's way out there, though. He's at 280. He's about to know about me. This isn't that juicy of a um, formation of ships, to be honest. God, I don't even see any freighters out of here that are high tonnage. That one right there could be 5,000 tons. So, two, one, five. Let's go listen. Let's go.
I'm, what I'm listening for, if, if you hear their screws, and then you hear the buzz of your torpedo, then I don't. I don't hear my torpedo at all. Who knows where that torpedo actually just went? It's a bummer. And it is a slow torpedo, and it homes in on the ship, but if the ship's got speed, the torpedo will miss. Because it won't have the speed to catch up to it. He's close back there. He's passing by real close. I'll order all stop while I start looking to see if I can attack any of these. That guy might have some tonnage. Let's identify him real quick. He could be a medium. He could be as much as a medium. Let's go look. Meanwhile, let me double check and make sure that this destroyer isn't... God, he's so close. He is so close. Are they zigzagging? No, they are not. Okay, let's figure it out. Single island, single stacker. His cranes are in the up position. Midship stack, down position. That's definitely not it. Could it be this one? A large old split. No, because the stack is much, much higher than that, so that's not it. It's similar. That could be it, actually. I'll put that in on a provisional basis. But I think it's a medium old composite. This is a medium modern split. There's a couple of those out there. This is what I think it is. Medium old composite freighter... Yeah, the mast work is right. That's not a medium. That's a large out there. Let's go back to the large. Large old split freighter. Is that the one I thought it was? Yeah, that's... It's likely what it is. 28 foot draft. Hmm... He's going to be quite some distance. Let's try to reverse it. We'll go back slow. Now that the destroyer has passed by, and we'll try to back out of the way of this one that's over here. He's going to be the next one that's going to be the threat to detect me while I'm doing my dirty work. That's a good target. There's a couple of good targets out here, actually. I think I'll save my torpedoes, because I only have three torpedoes left aft, so... Let's watch that destroyer, what's he up to? You gotta be careful too, because some even though they're zigzagging out in front of the convoy, sometimes they turn around and zigzag back to the convoy. He could pick me back up if he does that, so I gotta watch out for it. These guys here, I think, got some tonnage. Let me find him. That right there. Medium European Composites. A 5,000 tonner. That guy there is still juicy. Still contemplating it. Oh, there's another destroyer right there. Holy cow, he's on the far side. What is this one? His forward crane is in the up position, his rear crane is in the down position. That's pretty unique. Let's see if we can figure out which one that is. Yeah, it's not in the tankers. Let's go back where we came from. Did I miss it? This is terrible. I'm, I'm so bad at this. 
<sighs> That's it. Medium modern composite. I'll put one on him. Um, what's his keel depth? 21 feet, so I'll go 18. Torpedo tube 7 door open. We'll go 18 feet running depth. And I know his speed's going to be about 8.5, eight and, a half, eight and three quarter dots. We'll plug that in for now. We'll compute the range. It's about 1,000 out. I concur. I agree with that. I'm 15 degrees off my stern, so that means 65 degrees off of his bow if I've squared up their course right. What does this think he's doing? Yeah, three knots. I don't think so, champ. I'm going to quit messing with that. I'm just going to go with... What? i got to look at my notes. I didn't type it in. Let me look at calculator soup. That tab is still open. 8.75 knots. I'll plug in nine. Yeah, I've got a good solution on him. Damn, forgot to run this thing. Frick, I gotta start over. It's just about dead a beam. Okay, that torpedo's on the way. There's two of those. And also, let me look to the left. Where's that destroyer? I'm in good, good shape here. Before I go to get him, let's watch and see my dirty work. I'm sure I'm going to hit him. Medium modern European. Did I miss a shot that close? It's possible. Ah, uh, we'll wait. I'll hear it if I hit him. Let's select this ship. Oh, a torpedo impact! I got him! Let's see if he blows. Unit destroyed, I got him. I one-shot at him. That's good work. Oh, they know I'm here now. Nine knots was a little on the fast side. I could see that hit a little bit forward of midsection there. So that's 190 minus 180. It's 30 degrees. That's an easy one. That's 60. And I'll slow this down to about eight and a half. And he'll, you know, these things will change speed too. What's his running depth here? 15 foot draft, so it's nice and shallow. Two bait will put you at 12 and a half. Ah, we'll go 13 feet. He looks like he could be slowing down. What you do to detect if they've slowed down on you, once you've, you know, plugged in a certain speed that you think it is, as long as you got the red light on here and using the position keeper, is when you go to take this measurement for his range, you look to see if there's a jump right here with this needle. The gyro angle, if that jumps, that means you got the speed wrong. So here, let's look. He's going slower like I thought. He slowed down. 70 degrees off his port bow. How fast is this? This thinks he's going five knots. Okay, so let's take another measurement at five knots. There's supposed to be a jump because I just changed things. I'll leave five knots in there and now I'm gonna watch to see the jump should be ahead this time. I think he's going faster than five knots, but we'll find out. He's slower than five knots. And I'm going to take a look around to make sure the destroyers aren't on me. They're signaling, and he's working his way back. 
That one's at uh, 310, so he's coming in from ahead to my left. He's coming in from ahead to my right. There should also be somebody st more behind to the left, too. Yeah, well, no, that's not him. Yeah, he's coming across. That's him right there. I see... Oh, he's gonna blow. When you see explosions in the cargo holds like that, it usually will one shot will sink the ship. The fire will spread and he'll he'll be done. Enemy unit destroyed. All right. Who wants more? That small. He's getting away. You want the ones that are coming towards you, so you have time to set up your solution. Let's go after him. He's nice and close, and he's big and fat too. Okay, so with this ship, his cranes are in the up position on an angle. Got T-bars on the cranes. And... Let's see something here. Is that going to be him? It could be. No, that's not him. Is he large? Is it this one? Large old split. 28.5 feet. Let's start computing. 220 from 1 would be 40. 90 minus 40 is 50. How fast do you think he's going? That says 6 knots. We'll watch for it. Meanwhile, let's open our final available rear torpedo tube. And set its depth. They're getting close to me. I'm going to have to run in a minute. 28.5, so we'll go to 26 feet. Let's go see if there is a jump. I'm trying to figure out where he is. Right about there looks good. 9.55. There was no jump. Alright, let's see how close those destroyers are. Okay, so what I'm going to do is command my vessel to dive 250 feet, get below the thermal climb. This should be the impact here. That torpedo is about to hit. So let's wheel around and watch the carnage. I think it's this guy over here. According to my timing, I've missed. Some batch. He might have got on his rudder. It looks like he's turned. Yeah, you got lucky. You guys just don't know it. So, according to sound plot, I've got. Oh, I'm being pinged. Hang on. They're not pinging strong. They don't have a, a good beat. Yeah, Chuckles, these are the late these are the late war torps here. Mark 23s are probably what I'm shooting right now. Passing thermal layer. Let's zoom out. See where I want to go to meet these guys. I'm gonna go west by northwest. I'll use a little time compression here. And watch the little blue lines to see if they're catching me. Uh-oh. What just happened? No, early war torpedoes suck. They run too deep. I, those would have been misses. I would have set them for shallower depth. It's true. These are my Mark 18s. These are electric torpedoes. Here's a Mark 18. I might as well tell these things to start reloading. Which they won't do because we're silent running at the moment. And we're way, way deep. But we're still in the vicinity of the destroyers. 
They have a pretty good idea where I'm at, but they're not not quite certain. What happened to my sound? Um. Oh, let me sound general quarters. I got crew asleep. So now my guys, now I'll speed back up and I'll get my plot back. They're still all over the place here. Eventually, they're gonna, let me turn to the right. How are we doing on battery? We're fine. There they go, zooming back into formation. They've given up the hunt. So what I have to do now... I don't know which way they're going to turn, because the current plot, they're going to beach. So I've got to watch for a change of course. Just don't snore. God, no, don't get us killed. Let's go with probably about 8 nautical miles. And let's move this. I'm just using this for scale. Yes, sir. Return into course, sir. Yes, sir. Let's speed up the speed too. Secure from silent running. Let's get reloaded. I think they're far enough away not to hear me. Below the thermal client, anyways. He's searching. They're looking. That's why I switched sides here. Alright. Let's blow ballast. Alright, watch one and three are sleeping. Watch two is awake and on duty, so that's good. I'm popping up like a bobber. I'll be reloading the stern tubes in due time. Let's use some time compression here. Go to speed four. That's go that's to go full speed ahead. I don't know if I'm going to get around him in time. <laughs> oh, they changed course. By the looks of it. So I will move in this direction and try to reacquire somewhere in there. It's not much of a course change. I think that plot's going to be kind of on this line here. I can erase these doodles. Maybe I'll erase these doodles. It's weird how the interface works. Speaking of which, let's see what the sea state is. It looks good. Um, let's look at my kills. I've got to add this tonnage to my score. Giving myself credit, which is due. This game is epic, man. Okay, so 4467 plus 5202. I just think 9,669 tons, which I have to add to 30,632 tons for a new patrol total of 40,301 tons. That's two more ships. I'm up to nine. Alright, things are looking good here. That was a weird little effect I just saw. Anyway, close the captain's log. I'm gonna go to the radar. I'm gonna activate the radar. I wanna see exactly where they are and what they're doing, and radar will show them. Alright, so we see where they're at there. 
They're here. And they're kind of... This indicator shows them going, to, you know, kind of to the left, but I don't believe it. I'm still trying to do my end around. Let me... Let me get a... God dang, this thing pisses you off. These tools are so just clunky. You know, trying to be overly skeuomorphic. You're just a game. Get that through your head. Behave accordingly. So my plot's quite a bit off here. Something like that'll do for now. Okay, so I'm not off by much, fortunately. Kind of about like this. Even more so. God, where are they going? They keep in this route, they're gonna beach. Um, we're at full speed. I haven't gotten any charge. You can't at this speed. All of the diesel power is committed. Let's try to get here. Oh, that's gonna be tricky. What distance will that be from where they're at now? About seven miles? I'm gonna have to submerge. Let's go turn off the radar so that doesn't spook them. Still on the surface, oh dear god. Are my crew awake? Let's go look and make sure of that. Yes, they are. The engines would quit, so that's a plus. Kind of running low on torps. That's okay. I'm gonna use them up and get kills. Let's head to periscope depth. It'll get there quick at this speed. We'll stop here. Not at general quarters. Not at silent running. Okay, good. That's kind of how I want it right now. Uh, let's go forward at one third speed. I've got a pretty accurate plot here. And I want to get to within um, one nautical mile. Which would be that circle there. I'll stop. I'm gonna drift for a little bit. Got golly. You know, over here, they come. And that destroyer is definitely a detection risk. There I am in the water. Let's go take a look. I want to physically see what's going on out here. And they're zigzagging. It's going to be a tough shot from any distance. Where's is there supposed to be a lead destroyer out here? He's not there. Let's we'll see if I can hear him. I don't see him. He's at three zero five. So let's go look at three zero five. That would be here. Yeah, I do actually see him. Real low on the horizon there, so... These guys are zigzagging in such a way that they could run me over, even though I'm off their plotted course. I'm gonna go ahead at one-third speed. We'll do... I don't really need to do that, do I? Look at... According to that visual, they're gonna come through right there. Let's... let's stop. We'll update the plot based on what I just saw. Let's rig for silent running. We'll do a little time compression here. Let these little precious ships come along. Oh! Time compression, they zoomed by me again. They're still targets, though. Lucky I didn't get hit. There's a destroyer behind me. So, what should I do? Should I nail that one that went by already? 
These aren't good targets, but they are targets nonetheless. I'll go to Mios Woendi and reload. Let's hop. Let's uh, drop some torpedoes into his broadside. Oh, let's figure out what he is first. I think I already have him. Is it this guy? No, the bridge looks different than that. Although the masts are very similar. That's a large old. I bet it's a medium. He's got a really, really tall stack. Not him. This is it. Medium modern split freighter. Mm. That could be him. This area behind the mat uh, stack, that ain't him. That's not even close. How about that? That looks better. Still does I still don't think it's that. Look how squat. That might be a small? That's not it. How about you? Small old split freighter. I'm, I'm thinking that's what it is just because of how tall the uh, the funnel is. And also this little yard off of the uh, foremast. I'm going to crack his skull. 20 feet depth, running depth. Well, I'll go a little shallower than that. We'll go 17.5 feet. Let's start clubbing these seals. He's kind of going away from me at this point. Don't run, you only die tired. I'm going to throw a dart and say that. I don't know what speed to plug in, though. Seven knots? I might have to let him go. I don't like to shoot kind of from behind. Seven seemed a little too fast. Let's see if there's a jump. No, there was not a jump. So let that rip. Let's look to the left. First of all, let's look. Is that destroyer sneaking up on me? He's out there a ways yet. I'll be able to sink a couple more ships before he becomes an issue. That's the one I just shot at. I'm not confident in that shot. Here's another one. That's the same type of ship. 20 feet depth. Open tube 2. The 17.5 feet. Torpedo impact. He's burning. He just exploded. That'll be destroyed. Yep, there's the message. Get those lifeboats going. Atta boy. That one's turning towards me. I'd like to get a shot at him, but I think this destroyer over here is going to get too close before I get an opportunity. He'll get back on his left rudder, and that's when I'm going to that's when I'm going to bloody his nose. Open two, well, two two open. I got the depth set. We're ready to go on this guy. I just got to start getting readings on him. They know about me now. So, I'm going to say 60 degrees off the starboard bow. Probably still speed 7. He'll change speed, though, after seeing that thing get hit. Especially if he has to steer around him in any way. I want to get another reading on it. I'll keep that angle in there. Let's try this. Let's look for the jump. Um, Yeah, it's probably because I got this wrong. Plus, he probably is only doing 6 knots now. Slower yet. How about that? Can you believe it? He's coming around. What? What's plot say? Four? Nah. He's doing at least five knots. And plus, he'll speed up once he's done his maneuver. Still a smidge on the slow side, right? It's curious enough. Maybe he's only doing four knots. 
I want two readings against four knots to confirm it. It's faster than four. We'll wait a few seconds. The longer you wait, the more accurate it is. But I don't want to wait too long. He's almost dead ahead of me. A little bit faster. This angle here will help with that. I'm going to calculate five knots and fire. I got a solution. I'm going to fire. That, that shot's on the way out. I want to sink that ship for real. Where's that destroyer that was over here? Oh, he's way out there. He hasn't closed in. He's clueless. Wrong button. These are really easy to identify. These medium European composite freighters. They have such unique masts. That impact destroyed him in one shot. I one shot at him. Man, I'm going to town on these guys. It's soups on. Dang it. You gotta click and wait for the mouse or else it won't actually release. What's his range? 1175. Speed's probably very similar to 6. He's coming towards me a little bit. Chuckles, I had this game so mastered when, when I was younger. When I used to play this game. Oh my goodness. I used to do all this stuff... I mean, I had the, the, the names of the ships, their depths, I had that all memorized. I had so many hours into this game. This is something that I just bought off Steam. I usually stream Call of Duty and that type of thing, but I'm leaving and never coming back. Not, I'm not going to do it. Call of Duty is just such BS now. It's unbelievable. Okay, running depth. 15. It's a shallow one. So we'll open tube three. And we'll go 12 feet running depth on tubes three and four. And now let's go see if there is a jump. It jumped back. I overestimated his speed. And that's either because he slowed down his propeller speed, he's even slower than five, or he's got his rudder in, but I don't see him turning, so I don't think it's the rudder. He's going slower than five, actually. Slower yet. I did have 4.5. Let's go to 4.0 knots. That's a good solution. I'm going to launch two torpedoes at this ship. One at four knots. And one against five knots. Alright, let's take a look. That's the tail end Charlie. He's starting to get close. Let me go forward one third. Let's try to figure out what that ship is. I have one more non-homing torpedo in tube five. So let's go to tube five. We'll open it. Let's try to identify that target. He's got very, very steep incline on the um, cranes. Two torpedoes they hit. The first one set two fires. The second one destroyed. I got him. Let's see if we can identify this target. I'm being pinged. Son of a gun. What is that ship? There he is. That's him. Torpedo impact. He's dead already, though. 
Um, that's what that is for sure. Medium modern, 21.7 feet. Let's set this torpedo depth to about uh, 18.5. He's kind of going away from me a little bit. His speed will probably be six knots, I'm going to say, at first. Let's calculate range. He's dead ahead of me now. I don't have a lot, a lot of time to line up the shot. Oh, that's a good shot. Command the vessel to dive. Hey, look, you can see the torpedo taken off. Bye, Torp. Let's um, turn to the left here. I'm going to go straight east. Let's take a depth of 250 feet. Usually gets me underneath the thermal climb. And that destroyer is coming from behind to the left. The one that's pinging. He's clueless. He does not have me. That's excitement. Hi, Torp. Have a nice swim. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I gotta tell you, man. This game right here is just... It, it just seems like it wouldn't be like Call of Duty was, where it's like, holy cow, look, I've been playing for four hours, six hours. You would think it'd be slower paced, but it's not. You suddenly look at your watch going, holy cow, it's that late already? It's a great way to spend a Friday night for me anyways. A little trip down memory lane. Let's do some math with my calculator. Oh, I just hit again! What did I just hit? I just destroyed another unit. At 0913. I just ravaged these guys. I just sank four ships. Oh my god. Alright, let's add the tonnage. Let's add that last one, 3263, then the one before that, which is 5327. Then the one before that, which is 2432, and then the one before that, which is 2427. That be about right. Yeah, that would that would be my first attack. It's one, two, three, four ships destroyed there. That is wow. That's getting some work in, man. Fifty-three thousand seven hundred fifty tons so far on this war patrol. Four more ships brings the total up to thirteen ships destroyed. All in a day's work. All right. Let's look at plot. See if I'm sneaking out of here. Um, why am I 40 degrees to port here? I need to go east. We're getting closer. I'll use a little time compression here. Then I'm going to go northeast. I'm going to erase all my doodles because right now I'm just going to withdraw from the area. I'm going to get outside of about eight, nine nautical miles. And because the time is 0927 hours and I have plenty of electric power left, I'm just going to stay underwater.
me look at this. When the time comes, I'll reload these torpedoes, but I'm going to start to work my way back to Mios Wendy. So I'm going to look at my map. And let's work our way back. There, and as I cruise through this area here... I'll order a refit, which will reload my torpedoes. And the torpedoes that I have now, I'm guaranteed to run into something. Especially once I surface at night and run the radar. So let's do a save game, patrol. I think I'm far enough away now to order my crew to stand at ease. Secure from silent running, come up to 150 feet. All the torpedo tubes are reloaded. Let's blow ballast. Speed 2, we'll charge up these batteries. Batteries are 100%. Plenty of fuel. What's the sea state? Warship, closing. Bearing. Three, four, seven. Long range. Let's go see what that warship looks like. I hear him on hydroacoustic search. Which direction is he? Oh, it's another! Look at that! I got two torpedoes for him, too. Hang on, let me stop time compression. I just literally, they're coming. We're, we're going right straight at each other. This is really, really good luck. So, they're probably on a course about like this. Where are my torpedoes? Mainly in the front. We're going to go hard to starboard, and I'm going to whip a Louie here. I need to submerge. Oh my goodness. About one nautical mile out. Maybe a little bit more than that. Let's use time compression. Midships. Time compression. Let's turn off the radar. I know exactly what's going on out there now. I don't need any more clues. Periscope depth, hard to starboard. Midships. I'll stop. Let's save attack. We're gonna get him again. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna do something that requires a little bit of skill here. I'm going old school. God, I forgot to calculate their speed. Ah, oh, what a screw up. That was such a screw up. Well, I'll work around the problem. This is going to be because of the sea state. Well, I don't know. Let's go see how bad it is. It might not be that bad. Oh, crap, I forgot to turn off the torpedo bearing transmitter. There we go. Torpedo tracker, whatever they call that. Position keeper. I might be able to pull off an attack. I don't know, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be losing sight every time a wave comes. It's going to be really, really hard. I, I do have a way of dealing with this, though. What I do once this lead destroyer zigzags past? Let me back it up a little bit. I want to square up more with her course. Okay, that's probably good. Midships, let's back it up a little. That might be safe. I'll stop. Well, no, I want to go back farther. was thinking about a submerged hydrophone only attack on this this convoy let's try it it's high skill but it's fun
They um, they don't have radar. It's very ineffective, but you and it's night, so I probably wouldn't get spotted at 20, 42 hours. But I do I do go decks of wash, not completely. I just usually need to go maybe six feet above periscope depth, so your rigging will be visible, but not the hull of your boat. You'll still be mostly underwater. That's a loud prop. That's going to be a big ship. I'm at 32x time compression. I'm going to slow it down to 1x for a minute. I'm going to rig for silent running because he's probably pretty close at 030. So let's go see what he looks like. The decks of wash is a really, really good idea, and it's what I usually do if I run into super high value targets, I'll do that. So this guy's gonna go by me. He's just. Oof, I might fire at him. Tube 6 is my tracking torpedo. Whenever you get a destroyer driving straight and level, as they say. Let's, um. Let's go up to 55 feet instead of 60 feet depth. That extra 5 feet might get me over these waves. Let's see if I can get a good enough view at him. I see his rigging. I think it's Fubuki. Let's go see if I'm right about that. And we'll attack. Oh, uh, that's a mine layer. It's not shit. It could be Shiratsuyu? No. Yes, Mutsuki, I was right. 9.8 foot draft. Tube 6 open. Torpedo depth will set at uh, 7 feet. No, I'm going to go to 8 feet. I, I just want to keep it so it doesn't broach. And this ship is probably maybe 10 degrees off the beam, I'm thinking. Maybe 15. so hard to see that. Ugh. It's a terrible situation. Look, he's, is he really that far away? Yeah, he'd be about 2,000. That was a good measurement. I think the measurement's a little on the long side, but... How fast does Plot... The Plot thinks he's going six knots also. Yeah, man. For a destroyer to be putting along like that. Eighteen knots. Yeah, I don't quite think so. Let's roll it back to nine knots, though. Yeah, it's getting to where I can't attack him. It's too late. He's going probably eleven to twelve knots. Let me bring this uh, down a little bit because it's craning way out over the water. Let's close that torpedo tube. I'll use a little time compression, let him go by. Okay, good. I'm gonna go to one third ahead. Let's go pick an alternate target. It would have been nice to put a tracker on him. A homing torpedo out of tube six, but it's not gonna work. He sped up, I don't know what spooked him. I haven't blown anybody up yet. And I know there's somebody big in there. I thought, I could have swore I heard some, that's a big guy. No, it's not. Those other masts are from another ship. That's a big guy right there, though. There's two of them. Oh, yeah. This is going to be great. Let's go get the torpedoes ready. We'll hide the periscope for the time being. That's a large composite freighter, I think is what that's called. Modern, large, modern composite freighter. 
This is a 7,000 tonner, and there's two of them tail end Charlie, so I'm going to be able to ease up in there and nail them. 24.6 feet. So therefore, we'll go 21 and a half. Well, 22 feet. 22.5. We'll compromise. Twenty two point five feet. Tubes one and two are open and ready to fire. So that's the first of two. There's a second of two. He's getting to where I could probably shoot at him if I'm hearing the right ship right there at 030 relative. Let's go look. No, that's that little guy. Just a little nincompoop. Whoever I'm hearing at 040. And at one third speed for... For the time being. use time compression here. Okay, time compression off. Let's go up and take a look. I'll command all stop. I think I'm going to be very close at this point. Yeah, for my shot, I might even be too close. Oh, uh, look at that. I'm here and they're there. This is beautiful. I'm going to plug in seven knots, just kind of as a default starting point. This is the lead of the two. I'm going to fire at the, the second one, the, the tail end Charlie, first. So that'll be the longer torpedo run, and then the shorter torpedo run will follow very quickly against the other one, and they will hopefully detonate at pretty much the same time. In the meantime, I can identify them. And then I can hide the book. That one's in firing position already, big time. Gotta wait for the wave, there he is. Jesus, I might need another couple of feet here. I, I know if I go ten five more feet, I'm gonna be spotted. That's probably close enough for government work. 45 degrees is easy math. We'll let a little time pass so the wave isn't hurting me right now. Now I'll remeasure and see if there's a jump. I'm having trouble seeing in the dark though. No jump. They're doing seven knots. I'm dead nuts on with a speed calculation. So. Look at there. Good visibility on them. Oh, not no more. So annoying. Faster than seven. I'm gonna go 7.5. Oh, also I should fix this. 90 minus 40 is 50. I'm gonna shoot this guy here. I actually think he's going slightly faster. Plug in eight knots. A full eight knots, not 7.5. Wait for the wave to pass, go on, get out the way. I think I'm on target here. Perfect, look at that, nice lineup. 1860 becomes 1805 and no jump. I'll let that torpedo fly on him. This one is so close. This is almost a gimme for this shot to hit. 80. I'll take one more set of measurements and then I will fire this torpedo. 
A little bit of a jump, that's okay. Fire. Okay. Let's dive. Third speed will dive. I'll use this outside view. And let's see if my evil master plan works. I'm sure those are good torpedo runs, though. That torpedo is time to hit right now. So, that's a hit. And it hit a stern. That's good. If it doesn't kill him, it's he's destroyed. This one could be a miss, believe it or not. As close as that shot was. That torpedo could still be running. There, it's a hit. Ooh, yeah. Also hit a stern. So my prediction of eight knots is probably wrong. Nine knots would have been better. But he's on fire. He should explode. Enemy unit destroyed. And I'm hearing shots being fired. Boom! There he goes. Okay, so the shots I'm hearing are going to be star shells. Ship's destroyed. Let's add him up. The tally grow. Okay, so that's seventy-one forty-seven plus seventy-one ninety-two gives me a new patrol total of an astounding sixty-eight thousand eighty-nine tons. Fifteen ships total. He didn't make a macro for this. So I'm super happy about it. I'm hearing all kinds of shots. You know what they could be doing? They could be firing depth charges. They're not firing at me. They're not near me. I know that. This gauge right here is my depth gauge if you want to look at it in here. These ones are pegged at 165. This is kind of the high resolution one that you use to pinpoint your uh, periscope depth. This one here is the big one that matters. This is making me want to go visit. They don't work at all against submerged subs, but they still have to shoot them up because if your submarine has a problem and you have to, you know, go on the surface or, you know, or if you're still setting up, they don't know that I'm diving away to hide, so they want to find my periscope, so they, they're, they're going to try. Let's look at plot. Um, let's go to the southeast. Actually, I can just tell this thing to resume course. I'll do a save patrol so I have a checkpoint. Yeah, they're they're expecting a continuation of the attack. That guy's kind of coming towards me pretty good. Am I being pinged? No pings. But you see, he's close. In fact, I'll stop for a minute. And I'll watch him go by on plot. It's almost time to put my pizza in. What time is it? 10.10? I can wait till 10.30. S-Racing 43 started streaming? It's a friend of mine from, from iRacing. Alright, let's go back to one-third speed. They know I struck from this area, and they're they're patrolling it.
All right, at this point, I'm at 128 time compression. Let's get outside of six nautical miles. It's just now becoming nighttime out, so it'll be nice and dark up there. Blow ballast. We're on the surface. Let us secure from silent running. If you don't click it, it won't do it. Even though you're surfaced and the light's out. Let's check the sea state. Still on the rough side. Let's speed up to standard speed. We have plenty of fuel to make it to Mio Smoendi. Yes, sir. And let's delete some of these little doodles. This has actually been such a good patrol, I could go back to base. And then come out on my 17th war patrol, which is probably what I'll actually do. Since we're only halfway into the stream, if that. I plan on streaming till you know, maybe 1 or 2 in the morning. There's a radio report. Oh, you know what? Let me do this. Let me do my own radio report. No updated orders. My orders are complete. You know what's really weird? This patrol, I haven't had a single aircraft encounter. Not a one. What do we have here? Oh, these little guys? I love killing these. There's two of them. They always travel in packs of two. Let's take a right turn. Let's go intercept him. Destroyed. No fish for the Japanese army. Now let's turn to the left a little bit here. Yes, sir. New course. Yes, sir. One, zero, six. See if I can hit him from here. He's in range, but it's really hard to aim with any precision. With how jumpy the mousing is in this game. Destroyed. Return to course. In fact, let's turn on the radar so I can... Those will, The radar will sometimes see those little ships. It's not guaranteed. Save game, patrol, overwrite, yes. And let's add those two kills. <clears throat> <clears throat> what a hunk of junk. One junk, one sampan. They're both 80 tons. So let's add 160 to my total. Plus two ships. Two ships. They're not really ships, but they're still victories, so I count them. The game does too. The game scores them just as such. All right. We're at standard, doing our thing. Back to time compression. Radar contact. Those are probably going to be friendly, but what if they're not? Let's go see if it's enemies. Oh, they're fast. They're probably American warships. They're real fast. I mean, they're walking the dog on me, and only the Americans sail with that kind of speed. The Japanese always cruise around much slower. I'm going to turn off the radar, though, because it's going to keep canceling my freaking time compression. It's just going to keep detecting those same ships over and over. All right, refit complete. Let's order these torpedo tubes to be reloaded. And then you do another refit. 
and poof, just like that, you got a full load, even though you're not done reloading, and that's okay. It saves you time. What should I do now here? <clears throat> Sorry about the throat clear. I'm congested. Deploy to the Celebes and engage enemy merchant shipping. I have new orders. Orders received. Might as well. Oh, it doesn't want me there. It wants me up there. That's nice. This is a great area to patrol. You'll run into warships up here, and they'll be sailing in little warship convoys called task forces. It is good for your speedometer. Indeed, when you have this much fuel, I can, I'm not even going to run at two-thirds speed. I'm going to run at standard, because this is so close to home. I'm going to be able to double back here very easily to get more torpedoes. Let's turn the radar back on. My radar, my tubes are probably all full. Everything is good. Let's do a save game patrol. That's a good checkpoint with everything reloaded. We're out of Mayo Swoendi and we're back on track. Let's go find some Japanese shipping. There's a ship out there. These little guys again. Yes, sir. Hey, it's kills. I'll take them. Point blank them. Yes, sir. Runner. Yes, sir. That unit's destroyed. Those two are destroyed. Now let's let's commit an atrocity here. Let's sink the lifeboats. You guys can swim home. Return to course. Two sampans and a lifeboat. Did you need a checklist? Yep. I ordered the crew off the bridge so there's no witnesses. And that would total 161 tons. So we are now up to 68,410 tons. 20 victories. <laughs> yeah, nobody will ever know until they read my captain's log. <laughs> anyway. Oh, um, my, my radar is still running good. Time compression. Let's go back to time compression cover some real estate. Engage enemy merchant shipping in the area, so let me see. Yes, sir. I can now patrol where I want. Let's move these points around a little bit. Yeah. Only really plotted course. 
type of ship is that? A task force medium speed. All right, head south. Yes, sir. Full speed. <clears throat> Let's try to pick up this task force, you guys. I'm not far from them. Full speed. Buzzing through the night. About the radar. Radar is still running. And then let's turn down their projected course here, see if I can figure out where they went. What was their speed? This said medium speed. Oh, a daytime attack on a task force? Oh, on smooth seas. Oh my goodness. There they are. Hi guys. Oh, look at there's a big ship here. Look at the radar signature on that big guy. Two of them. Wow, they're coming right at my ass. All right, let's turn off time compression. I got to update plot. Now, if I turn here, I'm they're just I'm just right on top of them, man. This is what two nautical miles looks like. That, this is actually a good position and a bad position. I'm going to turn south. I'm going to actually, let me grab my plot point. I'll use that to navigate. This is going to be scary. This is going to be real scary. Because if you look at these guys on radar, which, by the way, I should turn that off, warships will... If I were to watch that radar plot, you would see, once they get within about, you know, eight nautical miles, all of a sudden a whole bunch of those ships will just... Just, just vector right straight toward me. you see them closing in at 30 knots. So, um... Let me save game. Attack. So I can take a mulligan if I need to. One third speed. Save some battery. That's a perfect stop. Look at that. Actually, let's reverse it a little bit. Get stopped. I'm right smack where I want to be. Why isn't it at periscope depth? Periscope depth. Yes, sir. We can do that. We got time. Starting to pick him up on hydrophone. over here to my right. Release the drone. Still don't see them. Oh, you just know they're there, though. Where are you guys? Let's take a listen. This can be a lot of fun. Listening in on these uh, task force. You can actually hear how powerful their steam turbines are. Slightly ahead of me. That's good. We'll do a little time compression. Let them sneak in. Keep sneaking. Did they change course? Oh, if they change course, I'm going to be pissed. Do I see them yet? 
come on, where I'm... There's a haze out there, too. That haze is making things tricky. That's gonna hide him. It'll hide in the haze. I pitched whiny on the decks. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. No, they're still coming towards me. Contact. Warship. Closing. Bearing. One. Zero. Zero. Long range. That is guaranteed to be a carrier or Yamato. I don't know if that wine is coming over the stream or not. That's a destroyer. This is kind of cool. A little time compression. Are they here yet? That's what I want to know. Where are you guys? They're behind and slightly to the right. There they are. Let's go take a look at them. This is always fun. Now, if I was playing this thing for full-scale realism immersion, I would never do this. In fact, 17 years ago when I played this, I had that disabled. Okay, there's the escorting destroyer, and there are two carriers. I knew those big radar signatures were carriers. Wow, what a beast of a friggin' formation. Let's reverse. Yes, sir. Back slow. Yes, sir. Midships. Rudder. So honestly, they shifted, they changed their course a little bit. They're kind of more like this. What types of torpedoes do I have back here? One steam, and I think these are Mark 18 electrics. Good, that's going to be good. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this job with th freaking four torpedoes. <sighs> Gonna try. Got to. I can't let them go. Gosh. We'll do a little time compression. See what's going on. Can I see him yet? No, not yet. It's scary. Where are they? Oh man, I'm right in the path of that sweeping escorting destroyer. Still can't see them. They're about to feel me. That's funny that the bow planes are folded up. Get all these torpedo tubes open. This thing's still running.
I see the destroyer. God, God, I see two destroyers with nothing else yet. Well, we'll rig for silent running in the meantime. I'll keep this periscope partially extended. They're going slow. I'm going to plug in seven knots, but they're probably not going that fast. And they're going to be, by the time I start taking measurements, probably 30 degrees off the starboard bow. Well in excess of a thousand meters. I'll plug that in just for now. We'll do a little time compression, but it's scary. Let's do a little less time compression. I want to hit a little right rudder. And the chips. I want to square up my reverse course with them. Let's start doing this the old-fashioned way. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can see him through the mist. What kind of range is that guy? It's probably this. 4,000. Man, I am right in this guy's way. I don't think I'm gonna get this attack. I just don't. They changed course. Let's go figure out what it is. That's it right there. Here you, 16,000 tons. And then Taiho's out there too, 35,000 tonner. This is not a good attack position though, not in the least. That right there is just a cruiser. God, look at that. Straight to my right. shit. He's signaling. I can't even shoot at him. I pass about 120 feet, I'm going to launch decoys and turn in underneath of him. Is he? Did I lose him?
think I might have lost him. I don't see him. There's nobody above me making a, a death charge attack. The carriers are within 3,500 yards. And I'm turning towards them. I probably need to take a route. I need to go straight north. Yes, sir. Straight north will give me a good intercept. Yes, sir. Somewhere in this area to my east should be where those destroyers are. There they are. And what they're doing is they're circling the decoy I deployed. The decoy will fizzle out, though, and then they'll realize there's nothing there and start looking for me again. Screws are at slower speed on that destroyer. Let's make sure there's no other destroyers. That's my prop wash. There's another one approaching from uh, the southwest. He's a long ways out yet. Still a mile and a half. Starting to get detected again. Let's let's keep keep going. I want to go. I don't know about here. What's my depth? Three hundred feet. I don't know if they're pinging me or not. That's a pretty fast ping. Repeat. That's. I think I actually hear them. I hear a horn blowing. I'm close to somebody. You look on plot. If I go to the outside view, he's coming straight at me, but probably doesn't realize it. He's over top of me. I heard his horn. And I'm at standard speed, so... That's what I'm hearing is that guy. These guys are converging, but this guy's actually coming over the top of me right now. Let's see if he drops. If he does, he'll miss. He's dropping. Let's pick up a couple extra knots. Get out from underneath of that drop. I'll pop another set of decoys here. They're going to hear those explosions, and I can maintain flank speed without being detected because th they can't hear squat with all that going on up there. This guy's coming here. Let's go hard to port. Let's see if he does a drop. He's right over the top of me. Head one third. I don't think he dropped. I don't see any canisters coming down. Yes, sir. Midships? Yes, sir. No. Now I want to look. So they missed their attack. I want to go back to here. getting close enough to pop up and fire, but I gotta get out from underneath of these um, destroyers first. I might not be able to do this attack. They got me, um, you know... They're holding me down.
God, I knew I had a bad firing position. I couldn't couldn't get the torpedoes off. Okay, sometimes when they stop pinging, it's because they're about to um, make a death charge run. the carrier I'm not going to ping him What's behind him I left making that noise it's not him could be there's just no way I can hop up here and fire off my torps They're all over me. Holy cow, I think there's five five destroyers on me. One of them's directly over me. And now there's also aircraft. Look at those friggin'... Too bad I can't launch torpedoes from here. There they are. So, I got a fixed plot. They're now more or less kind of out here going to have to do an end around we're going to start this over but I gotta get away from them first let's head towards the northwest you can see on plot they're just they're all over me of weak pings. I might be sneaking away from them. I wish there was a way I could get it to not stop at this depth. In Silent Hunter 3, you could cheat and go a little bit deeper. German submarines could go way deeper than Americans anyways, and I mean way deeper. I am diving. It went below. It's going down to 350. Slowly but surely. Turn the music down a little bit. I like the music. But I want it quieter. I could try to uh, try to escape this very, very serious situation I'm in. 
That's weak pinging. They don't have me. That time they do. That ping is on target. Miss T! Yeah, this isn't, um... It's unmodded. This is just f flat out unmodded. Let's tell it to go to a depth of 400. So, 500 miles... P10 isn't bad, especially because he ended up on his lid early on. Yeah, this thing is letting me dive deeper. Used to be there's a red line here. It wouldn't let you go below 325. But I've just commanded it to dive to 400 feet, and it's letting me down. I only have 820 more feet below keel, too, because I'm in a little spot where it's just kind of... not as... Um, not as deep as the rest of the, you know, big blue. Because I'm close to these shallows. Let's take a look outside and see what's going on. My god, look at all the destroyers! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven destroyers are here. And here I am, down here, 400 feet. That's cool, it's letting me go deeper. It seems like before I told it to dive and it just stopped at 325. Let's see if it'll let me go all the way to 400 feet. And is this thing gonna start springing leaks? Wow, Miss T, 8X for four hours is extraordinary. He was on a road course, too. We're talking about off-tracks. He didn't even go off-track. Yeah, I gotta tell you, that's, um... That's impressive. I can always reload the attack at 400 feet kills this thing. Probably won't. This is how I remember it. I used to always cheat. You know, I'd go well past test depth. So, I'm gonna risk time compression. Because I'm sure that they don't have me. And I know I'm not gonna run aground. That'll kill you, too, at this depth. So, look at these ships just kind of wobbling around out there. I don't I don't know what to think of it. I'm going to put a marker down in the midst of where my sound plot's got these guys. I'll erase that marker, because that's just utterly worthless. How far away am I from them now? About five miles... Where should I go? Probably a point right about there. Let's turn north. I go to speed two. I think I'm plenty deep enough that they won't hear that from where they are. I'll back up to 150 feet. That's secure from silent running. Let the crew stand easy. Yes, What's sir. going on out here? Okay, so we snuck away, you guys. That was scary. Seven freaking destroyers holding me down. Alright, blow ballast. Blow ballast. Yes, sir. 
let's surface the boat and see if we can find them on radar, because I'm not letting those carriers go. It is so hard to get positioned where those freaking... They're just surrounded by destroyers. They had changed course, though. That's what kind of screwed me up a little bit. Terrifying. Tang, have you read the book? The Tang, the book is freaking awesome. So is Wahoo. Radar contact. Is my radar back on? Or is it aircraft? It's picking up aircraft. Oh yeah, there's aircraft looking for me now. Oh boy. Let's see if we can avoid the aircraft. We can. I'm going to keep my radar off for the time being. Let's go east. Let's hope that these patrol craft don't find me. Yes, Single contact. I mean, they know there's a submarine out here and they're looking. All right, now I'm going to turn the radar on. Well, let's see where they're at. Oh, they made it all the way out there. Okay, so I'm going to pop another marker down. If it'll accept my clicks. And now I have two marks on plot that I can use to graph a probable course. And then I want to stay 10 miles away from them. So that looks pretty good, I guess. Um, I'm going to just go full speed, 20 knots, no charge. I'm going to try to end around out here like this for the time being. I'll turn off the surface radar. I'll keep... Well, you can't turn it off the air radar. Single contact. Bearing. One, nine. Look at all the aircraft. If they figure out where I'm at... Uh-oh. That group right there will see me. Let me crash dive. How much battery do I have left? Frick, what time is it? I can't really see it there. Oh, 9.43 hours. Damn, it's daylight. I have to surface. Ugh. I'll try to save a little battery. Go two-thirds. I'll stay down for... 45 minutes. Yes. Surface the boat. Single contact. Bearing. Yes. One, five. I had full. Damn it. That patrol's gonna see me. Crash dive. Yes. Two thirds. This isn't good. I'll wait till noon to surface. I'll stay at two-thirds speed. Yeah, the aircraft are going to keep me pinned down. I'll tell you what I'm going to do while I'm up. I'll do a position report. It's, a, it's the best I can do. I'll tell you what. Let's resave patrol. I can go back to attack and start this whole thing over again if I want. I, t I tend not to want to do that. Um. Do I have crew here? Yes, I do. It's just, it's not bright enough. There's not enough contrast. Piss poor design. I want to fire um, closing targets only in case they don't spot me. Targeting closing target. Engage the target. Yes, sir. Man the flak gun. They didn't see me. Single contact. God, and now there's another patrol of two craft coming. I, I'm just not going to be able to do this. Let's crash dive. 
I gotta wait till nighttime. I could creep ahead, I'm just out of battery. They're long gone now. Let's pop up. We'll proceed at two thirds speed. Actually, let's let's engage the radar and see if they just happen to be still in radar range. I doubt it. Yeah, they're not out there. I lost them. So I have a choice. I had my fun. Yes, sir. I think I'm gonna reload. Right at that point where I had these. And go try to sink them again. What is that? That's a convoy. That task force is long gone. There's another one here coming towards me. Or I could just take my lumps. I think I'll just take my lumps. It's not as though I haven't been successful on either this war patrol or, you know, my career. So I'm going to go back here and keep patrolling this area. Let me erase the doodles. And try to do better next time, because that sucked. To let a task force with two carriers go. Um, why did it stop? Were my crew asleep? Let me double check and make sure I don't have them. No, they're not doing anything. They shouldn't be. I clicked silent running in the off chance that that was stuck on. Look. It says I'm doing 10 knots, but I'm not. Oh, I see what it's doing. It keeps canceling because I got a radar contact. Single contact. Bearing. One. Three. Long range. Couple of slow freighters out there. They're worth attacking. Especially because look at the weather out here now. Yeah, that would be tricky. I'd have to do it by hydrophone. And that's actually doable with the information I can gather here. Let me uh, put a plot marker down on the lead ship. And that's at, I think that's 1024 hours is what it says. I gotta make a note here. Ten... Nah, I'm gonna go 1025, that's fine. 1025 for Mark 1. I'm going to go north, full speed. Yes, sir. Northwest. Yes, sir. Take a course of 330. Um, 1055 hours would be a good time to plot them. Right there. Two point five. Okay, and here's their course. So they're doing five knots. They looked slow when I used my drone view to see what's going on. Let me figure out how I want to approach him. I want to get within one mile. I want to get about a half a mile, actually, so... I'll submerge one mile out. This is a very precise course plot. Yes, sir. Be a little more than that. Yes, sir. A little north of northwest. Actually, let's do better than periscope depth. We'll go down to 90 feet. Yes, sir. Yes, There's 90 feet. Time compression off. We can sneak ahead at one third. I'll stop. Alright, time compression is bringing him into my happy zone. So here's how we're going to play this game. The one target I'm going to shoot at when they're straight ahead of me. 
Let me go here. Get some of this preliminary stuff set up. I already got them on radar plot going five knots. The lead ship I'm going to shoot at first. Once he is... I'm going to say 10 degrees past the beam. Which means... We lower that observation periscope. That's not what that is, is it? In any case, I'm going to shoot at him when he's 10 degrees off of my starboard side here. He's going to be 1,000 yards out or something very close to it. So this torpedo plot's going to be very, very accurate. And I don't need to use the um, position keeper. That won't be needed. Rough seas. I already know what kind of ships those are, but I'm going to pretend I don't. I'll run 15 feet of depth. Let me see what types of torpedoes I want to use. Steam would be fine. I'll save those electrics. I'll use tubes 4 and 5. Open 4, open 5. Actually, I'm going to go 18 feet. Most of these freighters are 20 to 24 feet. So 18 feet is just a, you know, a good deep hit that could disable them or destroy them with a single hit. And that's what I'm actually counting on. So that'll be the torpedo solution that I fire at the, at the first one as he passes. And then I'll shift to the target on the left for the second torpedo shot with two, five. I'll start with four. We'll do this by hydrophone. There's the first one. The second one just kind of blends in with it. How far out are they? We can track them. Why isn't this working? This should have adjusted itself. That's odd, isn't it? It's going to throw a number out here. Yeah, that's not... Whoops, wrong one. That should have did it. Yes, indeed it did. Get a ping off of that little trace. Yup. Torpedo in the water. 
wonder if I'm going to get any hits. I see one torpedo way out here. I uh, overestimated their speed. That first torpedo is a miss. Let's just do some time compression to see if they hit. No? Oh well. Oh well. I don't give a shit. Did it clear up outside, by the way? Yeah, the weather did clear up. Look at this. Let's do this. Yes, sir. New depth. Five. Three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hard right to starboard. Ahead one third. Those are both big ships. So, let's go look at torpedo tubes. Let's fire tube three. Let's get the crew going reloading those two wasted torpedoes. I don't care about torpedo waste, though. That's taxpayer's money. They might be going, maybe, maybe, they may be going much, much slower than I had anticipated. Let's go plug this guy in. That was him, I just missed it. Yep, that's him. 24.6 feet. We'll set the torpedo depth for 22.5. Tube is already open. Now let's see if speed 5 makes sense. I can lower this a little bit. I'm way up above the waves, more so than I need, I think. And let's see if there's a jump after the wave passes. No, I've got him dead to rights. Fire. This guy, can you believe this guy trying to run away? Where are you going? Might still have an opportunity to shoot at him. If I can identify him fast enough. That's him. 15 footer. Fifteen seconds till that first torpedo impacts. That is a devastating hit. Destroyed. Meanwhile, there's an electric torpedo heading for this guy. So I can't see his wake. I might go commit an atrocity. Look at lifeboats. We can't leave witnesses. He might escape. Watching to see if a torpedo hits him. He's going away. It's really hard to shoot torpedoes and score hits at them going away. He'll also zigzag a little bit and he may change speed. He'll certainly change speed if he digs into his rudder. That's automatic. At least I got one of them. I kind of see he's got a little bit of left rudder into it. So that torpedo's going to miss out ahead of him, I'm afraid. Does he have any guns? Yeah, he's definitely got guns. Big one on the stern. So the seas are rough. 
they cleared up though. When I first detected these two ships, it was stormy. How you doing, Jakers? Yeah, stream's going fun, man. I love this game. You don't have to deal with cheaters. The only person that gets to cheat is me. You know what, though? Um, that racing situation that you were in and that protest, you, first of all, don't be surprised that they didn't do anything about it. I'm quite certain that you're not. And um, I'll let that guy go. The original incidents are no big deal. You know, you had... Um, you thought he locked him up and hit you, but I could see from the replay on your stream that he, he didn't... He, he was spun. He was sideways when he came across that, that, that corner and, and went over the curb. That you did a really good job trying to avoid him. I mean, he only just nicked you a little bit, so that really wasn't too big of a deal. And he didn't really start to um, jackass you right away there, but then when you ended up getting him, it was sort of the same thing, but different. Because you tried to dive bomb. You literally pointed at the apex of the corner from that little mini straight. And there was no way you were making that corner. Not a snowball's chance in hell. And when that guy came across there and he was there, yeah, you collected him. You should have apologized. Because when he hit you, you, you had some dialogue about how, oh, man, this road racing, nobody ever says sorry or anything. And you didn't either. But if you had, he might not have come after you. But what he did afterwards was just lap after lap after lap of just antagonizing you. It was it was a simple mistake. It was true. You know, but it, it, it looks like a dive bomb to an experienced road racer, which that guy wasn't. I think, I think that, um, but like I told you in Discord, you could see that that guy just kept waiting on you. He easily could have drove away. He was faster. In fact, he started racing. There's a while there where somebody passed you a green car, and he raced that guy clean, but, but, you know, they were just gone and left you behind, and then he let that guy go and came back to you. He was just absolutely being a dig. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, man, on this track, I don't even know that track, but I could see a corner where you could have nudged him and he would have went out and pancaked the wall. There were so many good opportunities for you to... I would have dumped him. I straight up would have dumped him. There's no question about it. And, you know, there was just nine laps left in that race of him just antagonizing you. Nobody gets away with that with me on the track. I would have straight dumped his ass. And then, you know, of course he's not going to get anything, but that's the moral of the story is you wouldn't have either, which is why you should have dumped his ass. Because iRacing just doesn't enforce the sporting code. They simply don't do it. It's anything goes. They, they just absolutely don't do anything about it, yes. ever. I can remember when Barrett Coffee was intent wrecking. Every race I saw Barrett Coffee in, he intent wrecked at least three people each race. Each race, not three people in the course of a day or a week. Every single solitary race, he intent wrecks people three times, stops on track to get cautions. He just does everything you can imagine. And just, you know, week after week after week of me putting in... Well, let me see something here. I want to make sure I'm not about to get jumped by aircraft. No, they're flying away. There was a guy named Marcelo Fernandez who was the same thing. He was just an absolute dick. Constantly intent wrecking people. Yeah, airplanes are here. I'm going to have to stay underwater for the duration of the day. Slow it down to two knots. Make the battery last. It's 1,400 hours. I'll be able to surface sooner than later, but I'll still save battery. Okay, surface. Go to two-thirds speed. And i got to take credit for that. That's a big freighter to sink. No, it is, this isn't, this This is a culture that iRacing has fostered because of their lack of enforcement. It's simple as that, man. 
Seven, two, two, five. Well, since I've been to Mio Wendy, I have not had a lot of success. Let me see what I have for torpedoes. Oh my god, I forgot to load these. I want one of these and one of these. So let's update the scorecard. No, but I, th I thoroughly agree. It's 100% iRacing's responsibility to enforce the sporting code. And they don't really have the tools to do it, really. I mean, yeah, they can suspend you. They can chat ban people when it comes to that. But um, at the end of the day, they need more tools. For example, if you intent wreck somebody, maybe they don't want people to quit playing. What they should do is just take away 100 I rating. A 100 I rating penalty and a license demotion. So instead of being, you know, B 2.1, now you're C, you know, 3.2 or, you know, whatever. They should take people that violate the sporting code and take away I rating and automatically, if it's an intent wreck, automatically that's one license class demotion. Straight up. If they start demoting people, license classes, you know, think about what the safety system in iRacing actually does. It counts the X's, it applies it in a way that makes sense. The more safe laps you have, the less impact earlier X's in your race are. So on and so on. And it makes sense. So they give all these X's, in 90% of the cases, to the wrong guy. But in theory, it should take away your license classes, right? Well, when they manually look at a licensed driver and say, this guy did an intent wreck, they should look at the race he was in. This race had 200 and some X's. They should give him 10% of those X's. Like, if, give him 25 X's in that race and see what that does to their license. They don't have those tools. They can either suspend you or not suspend you. But they need to take away safety rating. They need to take away license classes. They need to dock you for I rating. They need to hit you where it hurts. And that way the people will still race, right? Because they don't want to lose racing population. The reason they don't take action is they don't want to suspend somebody for a month and have them say, screw you, I'm never renewing again. They don't want that. So um, I think if they added the tools for the um, the race reviewers or the people who review these, these, these protests, then they would have the tools that they need to do something about it in a way that would affect these people. What happens if somebody gets suspended? Well, if they're a streamer, they might stream another game, but they go in there and race on a buddy's account, or and a lot of these groups of friends have these communal alt accounts. They just have an oddball name, and anybody from their little Discord circle, they can just jump in there and do a race or two. I rating doesn't matter, and sometimes one of the guys is a hot shot 8k in his main account, and he'll go race that up to a 3.5k, or, you know, shit like that happens. So suspending people isn't even the right answer. So even if they suspend that, guys, I know on the oval side, it's it's very expensive on the road side to, to you know, set up an alt account, buy all the content, but it's it's a lot less expensive. It's still expensive, but, you know, these guys pool their resources and race on alt accounts. Alt accounts are the scummiest thing on earth. If you have an alt account, you are scum. You heard it here first. That's all there is to it. If you know, there's a there's a, a pro driver out there named Casey Kirwan who's never been on an alt account ever and he's a 10k. There's somebody who deserves their i rating. As if i rating even matters, which it doesn't. But you know, you get my point. So that, that actually makes it worse. You have this I rating that rates the drivers by skill. I say skill in quotes. And they... I rating doesn't mean anything to anybody or anything. I rating is just useless. It's utterly useless. It's just, if they could take it right out of the game, nobody would miss it. So, why even have it? The seas have calmed in the overnight hours. That's good. Since it's nighttime, oh, 142 hours, let's run radar and see if I can find something to sink. 
I'll plot a new search course here. I want to patrol this area and see if I can catch up with uh, another task force. They come through here all the time. So, I don't know, man. I know it's not a popular opinion. A lot of people just don't care if they have an alt account or not have an alt account. But what does that say about your personal moral character when something that means as little as I rating means so much to you that you're going to spend money on an alt account to preserve your I rating on your main account? And simply because I rating doesn't matter, I honestly don't care. If you have 20 alt accounts, it doesn't really matter. It just says something about your personal character when how you present yourself to other people with your I rating matters so much to your weak ego that you have to have alt accounts to preserve your I rating. It's disgusting. It's literally disgusting to me. That's what it says about a person, even though I totally don't care about I rating and just absolutely ignore it. And exactly, Jake, I've always said that. It's I rating is really not that's why I put the skills in quote. I rating is more a measure of your seat time and, and how many games that you've played, right? That's all that matters. You know, I know a lot of streamers out there. I used to love watching when I was into DMZ on Call of Duty. And I made it to level thirteen fifty at the time, that was the highest level, and it still could be. I think that's the highest level. And Stadi, to this day, and Stadi's far and away a better player than I am in, in, in any game, but especially DMZ. Stadi is a, a pretty do predominant, he's a dominant streamer out there, he's well known. I mean, he goes live, by the time his 10 minute countdown finishes, he's got 400 viewers, people coming to watch him, and he'll have over a thousand. And so, he's a popular streamer, he's a skilled gamer, and I had him licked. I was level 1350, and he's just still level 900, level 1000. I've got him blown away on levels in the game. Because he would do the, his little four-hour stream or whatever, and I would do 15-hour streams. It, it was seat time. It's just like I rating on I racing. I had a higher level, but I'm not as good a player as he is. So that's not a fair metric. You know, my level does not indicate that I'm a better player than him. So that is exactly right. And um, iRacing advertises itself as having this, this skill-based matchmaking. And I disagree with that, too. What do you think of that? Okay, uh, let me put this in perspective. Let me do a save game here. They should... Okay... When you play Call of Duty in the modern times, there's a huge outcry. It's not a good thing that they do skill-based matchmaking. Everybody wants it to just grab random people that live near each other, and they will have low ping when they play against each other. Right now, you have terrible ping. Because they're, you know, to find people at my skill level, they're grabbing people from Europe, they're grabbing people from you know, Asia, they're grabbing people from all over the planet so that they can put 150 people together in the DMZ of a similar skill level. Which really isn't a skill-based matchmaking, it's, it's skill punishment matchmaking. The more skilled you are, they punish you by making you play other people. That you know, That's why it's a sweat vest and not fun, because you have to play at your top game against all these other players who are also very skilled. There's not some guys that are good and some guys that are bad, some that are in between. It's not this random mix. And I don't think iRacing should match people by um, um, by skill. I think they should just, just grab random people. That's what the real racing world is like. You don't know who's out on the track. They don't say, oh, you know, Saturday's event's going to be these people, Sunday's event's going to be these people. Well, they kind of do a NASCAR to some extent. But there's Rick Ware cars out there, which are just low budget, trying to get an advertiser out on the hood and make a little money. They have no intention of winning races because they don't have the equipment to do it. So, in the real world, at each of the levels of NASCAR or any other kind of racing, you have different equipment levels, you have different driver skill levels, and it varies wildly. So, if iRacing wants to call itself a sim, I don't think that they should use iRating to match people up. 
I don't think any game should do that. I think all games across the board should just be a random mix of people. To me, that seems to make the most sense. By the way, there's a user that followed um, Chief's Voyage the other day named I'm a fish blob blah, blob. Blah. You know, like the blub blub, you know, the sound that fish bubbles would make? It's hilarious. And I actually, when I'm a fish blob blob, followed into Chief's channel, I've got an emote. I'll actually show you guys really quick for those of you who are on Twitch, this is, which is the only chat I read. Um, I'll show you this emote that I played back to him, and it's, it's, it's funny. It shows a little hand patting the top of a rainbow trout. You can see that in the chat, right? So he got a kick out of that. You know, his name is I'm a fish, bloop, bloop. And then I make this little emote. And it's a permanent emote. I'll have that emote for the rest of my life. So I think that's cool. Yeah, they do try to sell the idea that you can make pro. They hold that out there. It is, you're right. It's it's kind of, you know, what would you, how would you put that? Carrot on a stick? Making people think that, you know, hey, you know, I might just get lucky. Maybe I'll get lucky and make pro and, and be on a pro team and all this other stuff. Who would want to anyways? You know, for example, j is doing road to pro. He's every bit as good. I mean, he's always in the splits with all those pro drivers, and he does well. He acquits himself well against him in open racing and because he's a good, very good racer. We all know that. Nobody hasn't heard of j -Bo. You know, I mean, he's, as a content creator, he's out there doing, he's getting the job done. So let's sail across over here towards the Sulu Sea. And, you know, this this I rating thing and the way that they do it, this that's they're doing it to sell subscriptions. They want people to have those alt accounts. They say they discourage it, but that's that's BS. They could they could end that overnight. They could literally end that overnight. What's the sea state? Oh, it's beautiful out. Radar's on. I'm not finding anything. Let's turn around and head back. Let's go straight across the gulf here. Oh, what do we got? A convoy. Excellent. I cannot believe I'm almost three hours into this stream. It feels like I've been... This game is so much fun. I feel like I've only been, been streaming for 25 minutes. Honest to God. Let's speed up. Oh. Let's go find that convoy and have some fun. That's interesting that rainbows don't go that far south, Miss T, because you're in Florida now. I'm sure there's no rainbow trout down there, right? And they do. They like creeks and rivers. They won't go into lakes. If you're a single and not working full-time, you could give it a genuine shot. You would make it. And it's just too many responsibilities. That's why it's carpeted with kids that didn't have to pay rent. Because they were school kids, you know, they started sim racing, you know, before COVID and through COVID and whatever. I mean, you, you just have to have too much time on iRacing to compete at that level. It takes way too much time. Okay, so there's aircraft down there. I won't worry about them. And, well, there's supposed to be a convoy. I should be approaching it by now. I wonder what happened to that convoy. We lost track of it. I won't worry about it. Let's cut across the gulf and see if we can find another... Um, another convoy. Film 3D fish? Aren't all fish 3D? Let's be honest.
That would make things more more enjoyable. What would? Having that much time? Yeah, testing and building the setups. The, the, the pro thing, man, you gotta really want it. Some people have made a lot of money on it. People like Casey and Garrett, they've made a lot of money on it. That is a fact. Now, there was a um, task force that I missed. So there's task force moving in this area. Let's let's do some hunting in here. There's a slow convoy. I might be able to catch that convoy. I think I can catch this one. I just have to go around these shallows. I can't get caught up in shallow water. I'm a dead man. I don't, I, I don't know if Casey is interested in real world racing though. He's talked about it from time to time, and when I say talked about it, I mean in the context of he's not interested. You know, all these convoys that keep getting radioed in, I keep not finding. Okay, let's check the sea state. Oh, the seas are rough, dear God. How much fuel do I have left? Plenty of that. I'll slow it down to save fuel. Yes, sir. Yeah, Casey and IMSA, something like that. You know, something like that would be super cool. I agree. But he's, he's happy with what he's doing. You know, and if, if he's happy with what he's doing, that's all there is to it. I, I agree with, with all that. It's like I was saying about Jabo, you know? Jabo loves what he does. He loves racing. But the thing that you have to realize is um, when you start racing pro, the enjoyment factor is going to be a little different. Um, it's no longer... Racing is no longer for fun. It's a job now. Jobs are not fun. Work is not fun. Don't let anybody kid you. Work is not fun. It never is fun. It never will be fun. It can't be fun. It doesn't even have potential. Work sucks. It sucks to have to work. But at the same time, Casey's done well there, too, because, you know, I don't know what else he does in life, but, you know, he's, he's making a living. I think he still lives at home. I get the impression he still lives at home, and yet he makes all this money... Shit, in case he goes live, he's got 500 to 1,000 viewers. He could literally be a pro streamer. Literally, that's that's all he needs to make a living. It's as simple as that. Casey does not need to, to work a job. I'll crash dive, because that's aircraft. Yes, sir. Ahead one third. Yes, sir. And Casey's probably, to me, the most respectful iRacer on the surface. He never uses foul language. He doesn't give in to the peer pressure to use the foul language. He speaks plain English. And he's just, I have a nickname for him. He's Classy Casey. He might, he might defend himself if somebody wrecks him. He won't defend himself by wrecking him back or anything, but he'll say something. And that's it. That's the extent of it. And to me, that's, that's ultra, ultra classy. You just don't need many human beings like that on this planet. Casey's a remarkable human being. That's all there is to it. Single contact. Bearing. Aircraft kind of know I'm here. They keep kind of zooming by my little area there. So I went a long time without having to deal with aircraft. They're, oh, they're all over now. Did they just attack me? They did. I think he missed. Missed again. Might be friendlies. I don't know. I'm using time compression to ignore them. Um, I 
Yeah, you actually worked in NASCAR, Miss T. For those who don't know, T. Kangas, you really should follow her, you guys. As a little girl, her father was a basically a setup guy. He was a chassis guy. And he worked on real race teams in real NASCAR. Or big names. And she was there when she was a little girl following the family around. Got a little older, she started doing scorekeeping back when that was a manual process. And um, when she streams, she replays old races and she has these cool little, little stories that she tells about being there that day some, in some cases. And she can tell you who hung out with who and what restaurant was across the street from the, the shops and who went there to hang out afterwards. She just has so many cool little little nuggets of knowledge to share with people about her time in NASCAR and so her stream is a lot of fun to watch very very low-key just enjoyable hanging with people Yeah, I'm going to do this. Let me add to this plot. Let's go see if I can find... Let me make sure my radar's still on. No, when I dove away from the planes, I turned it off. That's probably why the planes were coming. They knew there was radar out here. New message received. A new message received from Pack News. What does it say? D-Day commences. 155,000. Allied troops make it onto French soil from England in a day. God. What an amazing event World War II was. Such a terrible waste of life. Even the technology. The technology is super cool. I enjoy playing these games and, and reliving the moments in an imaginary way, but it's just... It's too bad so many lives were so destroyed. All right, Jakers, you have a good night with the, you know, the wife and the doggy. You guys settle in for the night. Have a good weekend. Maybe you'll stream this weekend. If you do, I'll be there. You know me. It's always nice to chat with you. But um, yeah, man, catch ya. Thanks for stopping by, man. I definitely appreciate that. I hope people enjoy watching this. This game is, you know, very unusual. It's very old. I'm coming up with absolutely nothing here, and I don't know why not. You know what I might do? Let's go patrol this shoreline down here, and then I'm going to go patrol over here. It's getting to the point where I'm going to freaking run out of gas looking for targets. That is so weird. Yeah, he's got a great dog. Got a crash dive away from that aircraft. Yes, what time is it? 11.39? I can probably maintain third speed throughout the day. Surface at night. Yes, new message received. Box traffic received. What do you got for me? Com sub pack. Be advised. U.S. Marine Task Force en route to Saipan and Mariana Islands area. Request assistance from all nearby patrol craft so Saipan where's Saipan up here that's kind of a long ways how many torpedoes do I have left I might go refit and go join that fray up here in the Mariana Islands Let's do it. Just for something to do, right? There's nothing going on here. You know, Miss T, I want to do some 
some road. My participation as race control. Radar contact. Let's crash dive and hide from it. For the uh, Porsche Club of America has been an enlightening experience, and I've driven some of their tracks just out lapping, out there by myself. Yes, sir. And and I I gotta admit, road is cool. It it, it it's different though. You know that you're well aware. Okay, let's look at this stuff. You know what I might actually do instead? No, let's do the Saipan thing. This sounds like fun. But man, Saipan is so far away from um, Fremantle. But I want to have some fun and sink some Japanese ships. We'll make a pass at the Palau Islands. Let the journey begin. Those will all be friendly. Yeah. It's, um... The thing is, there's so many problems with oval racing on iRacing. But there's a lot of good oval too, you know, and there's a lot of variety there because there's, you know, I racing is just very jack of all trade ish, but th the way that they've handled. Let's look at this C here. A little smidge on the wild side, isn't it? The, the road racing on I racing is actually very good. I think the tire model works better. For road. All right. Look at this thing's going fast forward in reverse. That was a weird little effect. So there's a ship there. I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to respond to every little something here and there, you know. I want to move this. I want to move it to just here for now. Just because I need to look in the upper right hand corner. There's a task force there. American. There's an aircraft just magicaliciously coming right straight at me. That's annoying. Yes, sir. We'll stay underwater. It's only 0500 hours, too. Holy cow. Yes. Yep, there's a still crazy aircraft out here. You know, next time I surface, I want to run the radar and see if um, those are accompanied by a carrier. Because that could be what's going on. So let's do this. He didn't see me. Good. They're just in a big time search pattern here. I don't even know if those aren't, you know, those could be friendly for all I know, but I'm going to play it safe, just avoid them. You want, oh cool. That's really awesome that your dad did IMSA. I didn't even know about IMSA for your dad.
What is the sea state? It's a rainstorm, so I probably won't have trouble with aircraft. I'll resave the game. And then resume. Yes. And the weather has cleared. Crash drive, avoid those aircraft. We'll stay underwater for the duration of the daylight hours. Yeah. Surface the boat, time compression to speed things up. Well, let's run radar, because it's nighttime early. It's just now 9 o'clock. What's the sea state? Beautiful. Let's go check out Saipan and Tinian and see what lurks. So Pontiac participated at IMSA. I would have never imagined. Yes, sir. What's the sea what's the depth below keel here? I'm just curious. 1,300 feet, so it's not really unlimited, but it's not shallow either. I think the seas got rough. They did. Enemy task force. Where is the task force? 135 degrees is way west of me. Firebird, Fiero, and Firebird. I remember the Fieros when people were driving those on the streets. They were just a death trap. Fieros are brutal. I mean, it's you don't want to be in an accident in one. Let's see if you can find something on radar in this infernal weather. Lots of ships docked. Let's go to Saipan and check that out. Let's turn off the radar so it doesn't keep canceling my time compression. Because that's annoying. Alright, that's Saipan there. I don't even know if it's friendly or enemy ships. But I see the ships from here because of the glitch in the game. There's a bunch of ships over there. Bunches of them. Let's head that way. What time is it? 11.34, so we'll maintain two-thirds speed. And I'll approach like this. Okay, cancel time compression. Let's check the sea state. What's the depth below keel? I'm going to take us in close. Um, in the middle of the day, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Let's go to periscope depth, do you think? Yeah, I'll, I'll have plenty of battery. I'm really close. I'm going to get me in nice and close. What's the depth below keel here? 900 feet still below the keel. Sneaking into the harbor. We're doing a harbor raid. Let's save this as attack. I love harbor raids. And the weather is ideal for it. Truly. Periscope depth. I hope I don't ground myself. What's the depth below keel here in this? 800 feet. Oh, shit! I'm being pinged. What's the depth below keel in case I need to run? 700 feet. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on out there. I think it's a destroyer that's docked and not underway.
Let's turn to the left here. There's a ship right there. Let's t okay, midships. There's warships here. They're pinging me, but they're not underway. I see their flags, but not the ships to the right. Wow. This is a trip. Okay, so let's uh let's let's get stopped. see what type of ship that is. I'm thinking that. I'm getting ready to stop. There's a destroyer right there in port. I'm going to be able to kill these guys. They're not even setting off to come get me. That is hilarious. Is that what that is, though? I think it is. Well, hang on a minute. No, that's not it, because it doesn't have a yard on the, um... What appears to be the uh, bow mast. That's a medium. I think it's a small... Well, hang on a minute. Is this the ship we're looking at? No. That's much too squat for the funnel. That's my baby. 20 foot draft. The harbor is much shallower than that, so... Uh, maybe I can go 18 feet. Which torpedo should I use? Tube? I don't, I don't, this is electric. Electric. We'll do tube 3. Tube 3, open up. Eighteen feet of depth. We'll go ahead and do some measurements, although none of this matters because I'm going to plug in speed zero. That is hilarious. They're sitting there pinging away at me, but they're not coming to get me. Watch my handiwork there. Oh, I split it in half. Holy cow. Where did that destroyer go? I think he's there. So that's uh, midships. <clears throat> Depth below keel, 500 feet, so I still can dive. There we go, now I got a ship spotted. There you are. I wonder what you are, though. Let's go full reverse. Still a ship over there to attack. Tube 4. Open. We'll just leave it a default 6 feet. Let's just see what happens. Alright. Just for shits and giggles. I'll plug in some data. Yard shot. Torpedo in the water. This will go foul. We'll watch it go do its dirty work in the harbor. Sick him, boy. 
Uh oh, too deep. No. Yeah, that was decisive. Holy cow. No more pinging from you. Let's use my drone. There's another freighter there. There's a bunch of freighters over there. Oh my goodness. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. No more pinging. That problem solved. What's up, gamer kid? Yeah, the Fiero was rear engine. Like a Volkswagen. I think it was liquid cooled, though. Volkswagens aren't liquid cooled. What's a depth below keel here? Still 600 feet. Um, let's go. See if you can find some more easy targets. Oh. I was still in reverse. I think there's a ship there. Dead ahead. Might be the one that I clobbered. Let's drive around here and figure out what's going on. This is fun. A harbor raid? Oh, there's a ship. Low keel here, 700 feet. This is a deep harbor, holy cow. Oh, let's, um... Yes, sir. Slow. Let's get stopped. I got two targets in range here. One was to the left there, that guy, and that guy. Let's start reloading torpedoes, for God's sake. That is a big, heavy ship there. It's like shoot fish in a barrel. I'll stop. Yes, sir. I'll stop. Is that it? No, that's a Liberty. That's American. That's what it is. Large modern composite freighter, 24.6 feet. Tube five. We'll set that depth to 22 and a half feet. Now nah, we'll go 23 feet. No, 24 feet. That's how we'll do it. Roughly. That's close enough for government work. So that ship's oriented about like this. None of this matters because the speed is zero. This is too much fun, man. Shoot fish in a barrel. That looks like it could go deep. Let's see if it gets it. Are you going to go off? Oh, it missed! I blew up the pier! Let's move this up here. Get this, you know, kind of out of the way. Damn! We'll open this. It ran deep. We'll go back to my old formula. We'll go 22 feet. Torpedo in the water. That's an electric torpedo, but I'll find it. You can hear the thunder and lightning. That ripped a big old hole out of the bottom. Boom! Oh yeah! You hit them nice and deep like that, it just breaks their backs. Ah! 
are fun. That's going to be a, a tanker, I think. You see tankers with their engines in the back a lot. Let's try to figure that one out. It's not a T3 tanker, guaranteed not that. I don't think it's this. No. How about that? This is a good candidate. Medium old tanker. Draft 21 feet. We'll set the torpedo depth to 17 and a half feet. Ah, 17 feet. That should be fine. This one's kind of facing out a little bit. Let's go get him, little fishy. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a hit. That's gonna be a hit. That's gonna blow him up. Caught him on fire, it's a tanker. Enemy destroyed, she's toast. It's just look at that, he's alongside the pier. Ooh. Is this a floating pier? Look how deep it is. Wow. How is there a pier here? There's nothing. Oh, the lifeboats didn't even get a chance. Tearing them up. All right. Let's go figure out what else we got here. That little thing is so shallow, I can't even get a torpedo to hit it. It's just, you can't hit those with torpedoes. Any more? Yeah, another one of those. Another one of those. There's three of those. There's this guy. That's a 10,000 tonner. Holy cow. Well, yes, sir. Mark to port. Back yes, sir. How are we on torps? Um, I have more stern torpedoes. So why don't we? I know what I'll do. I'll back in to attack that next group of ships. I think they're kind of out here in this area. Use a little compression. Let's use time compression back it in. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is so scandalous. Yeah, obviously in the real world, those crews on those other sub chasers would, you know, fire up the engines and come after you. Oh, I'm about to back into view of him. So I need left rudder. There's that little guy. There we go. That's a 10,000 tonner. We want to sink that for sure. 28.2 feet of depth. Stern tubes. We'll go with uh, 9 to start with. Large modern tanker. That's going to work. Let's set the depth to... 27 and a half feet. Torpedo in the water. Where's my little fishy? Where'd my fishy go? Well, 
Where's my fishy? Pretty straight shot. Torpedo impact. What did it hit? I don't think it hit the ship. Or did it go under it? It looked like it might have blown up behind it. Son of a gun, it went too deep again. Yes, sir. Use time compression to get him back in sight. There he is. Am I too close? It's pretty darn close. How close? Oh my goodness. So I'll manually plug in a range of 350 meters. Yes, sir. Ahead one third. Let's get stopped drifting into shore. Yes, sir. That's a stop. So let's plug in a range of 350 meters. Now that we're stopped. Son of a gun, though. Need two feet? This thing is 28. That should easy be a hit. All right. Well, we're stopped, so we won't drift and ruin the shot. Torpedo in the water. It's my torque. It should be over here. There it is. All right, let's see what happens. Smacked him in the bow. Oh, the engine exploded in the back. I'll take it. Is the other guy? He's over there. <laughs> I'm ravaging this place. Holy cow. Another ship over here somewhere. find it. Look at this. This is crazy. Yes, sir. Brother. Yes, sir. Brother. There it is. Right there. Let's stop backing up. Watching my speed. Zero knots. I'll stop. What is that ship? Besides a sitting duck. Is it that one? Maybe? Large? That doesn't look like a large. Not by any means. But it could be. No, the bridge looks different. It's an old split freighter, though. It has a taller... Um, ...stack. Could it be that? No. This is it. Well, nope, that's not it. 
Here we go, small old split freighter. I'm sure that's what that is. 20 feet draft. So we'll set the depth here. 15 feet. No, we'll go 16. No, 17. Haha. <laughs> I think that says it's 800 out. I don't think he's that far. I'm gonna manually plug in 400 and fire. Let me find my trap. Here she be. Can't wait to do the scorekeeping on this. Unit destroyed. I keep one shotting all of these. Wow. Okay, so now I want to do something interesting. Um I want to try to torpedo that, but do I have any torpedoes left? The answer is really kind of no. I have. I don't want to waste a homing torpedo. So let's go midships. Forward and slow. Maybe we'll go ahead with a right rudder for a little bit. loading a stern tube for me. Now let's get turned around. <laughs> this is something else. I just can't believe how deep this port is. Feet forward, slow, slow. Oh, there's another ship here. Look at that. Head to the left. Are you serious? And it's a biggie. Look at that. What the heck? Okay, um, stop. I'll stop. What is that, though? Yes, sir. Rudder. Rudder. Yes, sir. Back slow. I mean, when I flew through here with my drone, I didn't even see that thing. Yes, sir. I'll stop. What is it? Oh, that's another 10,000 tonner. Are they spawning in? That's a, that's a curiosity. That, that could be what's happening. This is crazy. It's fun, though. Nice easy targets. 28.2. We'll go 26 feet. This is crazy, man. I've been having so much fun. I haven't even eaten yet. I normally eat around 10. It's 12, 15. Damn. All right, let's plug this guy in. It's a steam torp. That makes it easier to follow. So it launches straight out of the submarine and then it turns to its assigned gyro angle. Which in this case, it might miss. It did. It's going to blow up when it hits this, though. 
How did that miss from this range? And I'm stopped. He stopped. How? Explain. The depth looked good. I'll try again. This sucks. How did that miss? You know what? What? Look what this gyro angle is doing. That's crazy. About 324, right? So let's go here. I want to see something. Get that rudder over. Yes, sir. Current speed two. And I'll creep up here. And I'm gonna make this a straight gyro angle shot. Yes, sir. Back slow. That is literally point blank. That one's gonna hit. Oh! Magnetic influence? Nothing set that off? Excuse me? 28 foot keel and I set it for 24 feet depth. I don't get it. I'm lost. Let's get the reloading going. And I'll do time compression. These torpedoes reload. There's another ship there? Where do all these ships keep coming from? What the heck? I wonder if it's respawning ships. 32x time compression. We'll wait for these torpedoes to reload. I have the realism setting for realistic reload time enabled, so they don't just pop in. They take a little time. I'm slaughtering them, though, man. This is cool. Okay, hang on a minute. Tube 1 is ready. Opening tube one. I'll just go 22 feet. I mean, that ship should be 28 feet down, but my god. Dang it. Forgot to check this. Fire away. Torpedo in the water. 10,000 tons. It's worth kind of camping for a little while to get that 10,000 tonner. She comes into sight. That's looking good. Let's see if it started a fire. Oh, it did. She's going to blow. I still didn't get a destroy message. Is this, this thing going to blow on me or am I going to fire off another torpedo at it? He's settling by the stern. She should found her. 
Oh yeah, look at it caught fire up at the bridge. The fire's spreading, she's gonna explode. I don't think the damage control teams are gonna be able to keep up with that one. Looking in the background, you can see like these guys are just chilling, walking around. Places under attack, dead ships everywhere. They're just hanging out on the docks, like nothing ever happened. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. So she's settled by the stern, but uh, she just refuses to, to go all the way down. I might have to put another torpedo into her, but there's a ship there too that would be fun to go get. I think I'll do my stern torpedo tubes on that one. This is a shallower area of the port. There she goes. There's the destroyed message. All right. So let's do this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wonder if I'm going to be able to do this. What's the depth below keel here? I want to keep an eye on that. 340 feet. Midships. See, right now, out ahead of me, they should be those little sub chasers. There's one right there, in fact. I want to try to kill one of those. <laughs> well, let's do that. Got the rudder in, I'm creeping up. Let's go almost full. Let's do this. And just go look at this thing. I think that's... Is that small gunboat? Or is it medium gunboat? That's a 3.6 foot draft. These are 3.6 feet of draft. It's not a minesweeper for sure. And then we're into destroyers there. So it's either... That or that. Oh, that, that tells a story right there. The way these are split. 3.6 feet. Let's go slow reverse to break the speed. Watching my speed once I'm perfectly zero. Meanwhile, I'll plug in some data. God, I still gotta wait for that to reload. Son of a gun. I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. Shit. Okay, so let's look at that reload. It's almost ready. Do 32x time compression, try to get this done. Should be about ready now. Real close. There, it's ready. So tube 2 is ready, we'll open tube 2, we'll set this for minimum, which is 3.5 feet. That's the best I can do. That's screwed up again. There. Let's see if I can actually torque those. I, I don't think I can. That doesn't look on target anyways, for whatever reason. No, it is. It's going to make it. What a silly little ship to waste a torpedo on. But I don't care. I'm just having fun. Can I get him? Can I get him? Nope. Can't torpedo those. The torpedo dud? It should have exploded when it hit the docks. There it goes. There it goes. 
All right, so hard right rudder. We'll torpedo this guy. I'm going to pass really close to that ship. Let's see if he shoots at me. Also, how deep is it here? Still 284 feet. I got a lot of room to dive. This close to the pier is crazy. Midships? Yes, sir. Oh, he's actually shooting at me. He sees the periscope. back standard just because I want to break my momentum here and have a zero knot shot down to two knots looking here in the lower right down to one knot and stop at zero so let's go figure out what that is I think that's one of those little guys. I'm going to start on the small side. Small split freighter is what I think that is. Yes, that's exactly what that is. I can tell because it's got a yard on the uh, foremast and also how tall the funnel is relative to the rest of the ship. So he's facing me about like this, which doesn't matter because the speed is zero. About 300 yards out. Um, that's going to be a stern tube. What kind of tube nine? I'm going to fire off that steamer. Nine. Open. 20 foot draft. So I'm going to set this for about 15, 15, 16 feet maybe. 16 would probably be good. I'll go one more time through the loop. Fire tube nine. Torpedo in the water. She's a steamer, so we'll be able to follow it. It's a stationary target. Why is it missing to the rear? It's still gonna hit. There you go. Unit destroyed. Look at all the carnage. Oh my god, I'm ruthless. That's enough fun for one day. Look at all these ships. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ships destroyed. <laughs> Alright, let's head out to the east by northeast. Got a lot of battery left. We'll go standard. I'll command it to lower the periscopes. Depth below keel is 300 feet, so we can afford to kind of just go down a little bit, stay out of the weather. 90 feet's fine. This is insane, you guys. Holy cow. I ravaged Saipan. I absolutely ravaged this base. Wonder what's on the other side of Garapan. I suppose I should go over there and raise some hell. First things first, man. The last ship that I sunk was on May 30th, all the way to June 15th, so it took me two weeks to get here using time compression. And then once I got here, boy, did I go crazy. <sighs> Let's start typing in these numbers. <laughs> 2432. And then, oh, look. I did sink a sub chaser at 438 tons in there somehow. Oh, that was a sub chaser. I thought that was a destroyer. That was a sub chaser. He was pinging too. That 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 was my pinger when I first came into the harbor. So he's gone. 7195 plus 4973 plus 10028 
plus 2,432, 2,432, plus another 10,028, plus another 2,432. Oh my god. What a night, you guys. What a night. All right, for total tonnage, we're up to 115,593 tons for this patrol. And eight ships is 29 ships total. Wow. That is just plain old crazy. You know what's interesting? That's going to put me over a million tons easily for my career. All right, let me double check this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct and accurate. Okay, we can go straight east. No course. Yes, sir. Seven. It's still the afternoon hours. making sure it's still stormy out. Got away with it. <laughs> I guess in this game, the meta is if you if you really want just raw tonnage. Yes, sir. Go after these ports, especially Saipan. Holy cow. What's the best way to get back to Fremantle? I'm I'm gonna go back to port. It would be Mios and Wendy would be probably the best bet. Pretty much the way I came, as far as I can tell. All right, where's my ship at? Good lord, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, I hope the commanders are happy. Those were my orders. Let us save patrol. Wow. Fox traffic received. Let's go see what they've got to say. The U.S. Marines have landed on Saipan. Go get them, boys. Oh, wow. I have new orders. Proceed to the vicinity of Saipan Island and take position to provide lifeguard duty for friendly aviators conducting operations against enemy installations. Make arrangements to ensure arrival on station no later than 7th July. <clears throat> well, that's three weeks from now, you guys. What should I do? Oh, Steve, what's up, dude? Driving under the influence? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I feel sorry for the people that are racing with you, but that's also eye racing at night. <laughs> Think about it. Oh, God. I can probably arrive earlier. Let's see what the orders look like. Oh, yeah, there it is. Let's go over here to do lifeguard duty. That's a new assignment. It's the first time I've had that happen. <laughs> That's Racing 43, guys. 
causing hate and discontent. Jumpy bug racing. Oh, dude. No offense, but you're terrible at that. I saw you try to race that the other day. You kept looping it. Uh, you, you, you'll you get the feel for it, though. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, IRX and Dirt Road in general is a lot of fun, but... And what's up, gamer kid? I, I want you guys to know that this guy is um, an old friend on iRacing. And he's older like me. A real-world dirt track racer. Retired. Yeah, you shouldn't keep that in the house. And if you do, you should hide it from yourself after 2 p.m. <laughs> Maybe I'll come and join you if you're still streaming when I'm done. You know, I like hanging out over there. I should pull you up. I'm, I'm going to pull you up on another screen. That I can do. Oh, you absolute menace. Oh. I'm getting hungry and tired. This is getting to be past my bedtime. I know that sounds weird. I mean, especially if you know my former schedule. Oh my goodness, fighting an ear infection. You shouldn't be drinking if you're taking antibiotics. That I can tell you. That's bad for business. Are these American aircraft? Let's see. There's lots of aircraft flying around. I hear these aircraft. That's Japanese. All right. Time to ring the bells of St. Mary's. Good luck, S Racing. I'll be watching off and on. Yes, sir. I got my crew on deck. We're at general quarters. They might not have seen me in the darkness. Look at all those planes! Oh my god! Major air battle. Let's have my crew stand at ease. Because I'm used... Secure from battle stations. If they come too near me, those aircraft, then I'll put my crew back out there. Here they come. Look at all the aircraft. Shot one down. That one buzzed me. I think I've got two of them destroyed. Oh, check it out! Look at all these friendly... These are friendlies. Are they, I wonder? This is bizarre. I've never seen this before. Out ahead, there's something on the horizon, low and a little to the left. It's like a signal flare. I think I gotta go rescue these guys. Oh, hell yeah. Where's the button for it? It's hiding under one of these. I remember it. I have to find it. There we go. It's under this tab. Is there one behind my left, too? I think these are all crew that need to be rescued. Yes, sir. A handful. Yes, sir. Those are all shot down aircraft friendlies. That's what I'm seeing. Okay, let's do this, this, this over here. Oh, 
what to do. Got shoved into the pylon. Oh, I can believe it. Oh, I totally believe it. This is brutal. Using my binoculars. Let's let's go back here. Ah, oh, I drove past it. Let's reverse. Yes, sir. Get behind to the left. This, if you hover your mouse over, it says rescue survivor, rescues the target survivor as highlighted through your binocular view. This is supposed to be a survivor. I can see a red flare. Let's do some time compression, maybe? I drove past him. What am I looking at? This sucks. Is there one in front of me? Yes, now there's one in front of me. That's behind. I hate it when games are kind of buggy and they're not clear about what, what they want you to do. That's a friendly plane. These look like possibly enemy. No, those are also friendly planes. I don't see anything in the darkness here. But it's marked right here. Let's get up here real close. Nothing there. Yes, sir. Bar to port. Yes, sir. This doesn't light up by any means, and here's the binocular. I don't see anything here, so I don't know. Let's let's sail on to the next one. Let's head for that flare. I think that might be what that means. So let's go like this. I know what to do. Look at now it's over there. To my left. Maybe I'll just take the ship home. I get so tired of this dumb shit not working. There's a flare there. Yes, sir. Hard to port. Yes, sir. Using time compression because how slow all this is. And it's bouncing and making me crazy. Yes, 
Yes, sir. Let's use a little bit of left rudder here. Yes, sir. The sky is sweet looking though. Yes, sir. Rudder. Yes, rudder midships. Let's use time compression to get up there. I'm right the heck on top of this thing. Yes, sir. Hard to port. Yes, sir. And it's not lighting up. I'm looking in the bottom left. There's a life ring icon there. There it is. Oh, did I get it or not? I don't know if I hit it in time. Yes, sir. I'll stop. Yes, sir. Back standard. Clicked it. I don't know if it did anything, but let's look at the log. Captain's log. Nothing here saying a guy got rescued. Yep, it's June 15, 1944, but I'm not near D Day. I'm. Single contact. Yes, sir. Bearing rudder. Three. One. Out in the Pacific. I'm actually near Saipan. I'm trying to rescue downed airmen. Single contact. Bearing. Oh, there he is. There's a guy in the water there. Long range. Can barely see him. I got him. Survivors rescued, it said. Got it, got it. Good, 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 good. Yes, sir. Rudder. I just saved a downed airman. If it were daytime, you would be able to see it better, I'd imagine. Also, it's, it's thunderstorming out right now. So I got the message up here that says survivor rescued, but I'm not seeing it in any of the logs, which would be nice to see airmen rescued in the captain's log. One more wreck, you mean, us racing. You're going to wake up tomorrow and come look at your eye rating. You're going to go, what did I do? <laughs> anyway, um... Let's look around and see if I can see another flare. Yes, sir. Ahead. We'll order a head standard. Can tell those guys to get off the deck gun. I'll plot a course first here, I guess. See if I find anything there when I get there. I don't see any flares, but the problem is there's probably a guy in the water, but I can't see him in this in the night in the storm, unfortunately. To mark him with the binoculars and, and order the crew to extract him from the water. And the other thing that I want to do is go look. Here's a sunken ship icon. There might be survivors there, too. Radar contact. Yes, yes, I know all about all those radar contacts. There's a bunch of stuff out here that needs to be rescued. Relieve the watch. Single but, but I can't see anybody. Bearing one, five, seven. Long range. Because it's dark and it's raining. I do see a flare up ahead here, though. So... Yes, sir. Runner one, zero. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Midships, I see a flare. And that flare is probably at the location of that ship. Did I miss the flare? Where's the flare? Oh, it's over there to the left. Yes, sir. There's two of them. Yes, sir. And somewhere near that flare, there's there's survivors in the water for me to try to go get out. Oh, this is making me crazy. Use time compression. My gun crew out there, I better crew that in case uh, those are enemies, but I'm hearing planes, but not really, you know, paying attention or caring about it. Oh, what happened? That flare disappeared. Nope, now it reappeared. There's the crew in the water. I'm actually just kind of looking to see if it lights up the life ring. Honestly, I just... It's so hard. With this weather like this. Making me crazy. Where's the front of my boat? How far away is that? Bearing two, three, one, long range. There he is. Single contact. Bearing. Two, three, one, long range. Yes, sir. Behind one third. Yes, sir. I did see the guy in the water. Right there. Survivor rescued. Got him. I bet he's happy to see us. Yes, sir. Behind standard. Yes, sir. This could go on all night. It's fun. In a way, I just wish it was daylight. It won't be for a long time. It's just now nightfall. Yes, sir. Rudder. Yes, sir. If you go to 32x time compression, the flare disappears, and that's obnoxious. But 8x? How about... How about 16x? Nope, 16x is too much. 8x is the most it lets you do. It seems like they're drifting. I keep having to adjust.
and it takes forever. It, it, you get the sensation that it's running away from you. Single contact, bearing, two, three, yes, sir. five, long all range. Stopped. Yes, sir. Jim spotted. Let's see if we can. There's all the pink mist. Where's the guy? I don't see him. Usually you can kind of see him a little bit. Yes, sir. Hard to port. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rudder. Back emergency. Back full. Looking for him. See if I can find him. There he is. Survivor rescued. Okay. You zoom in. It does show a survivor here. Yes, sir. Go ahead, stand. Let's take a look around. Do we see any more flares? I wish it showed all that in the captain's log. Lifeguard duty. Haven't I saved enough? You're going to make me stay out here doing lifeguard duty. Um, where should we go? Let's go look over there. Don't see it. There's no flare there. No flare, and because it's night, <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to find him. I'm sure of it. Let's go check the next contact. There could be a guy there, but I can't see him in the dark. Oh, whoa. More markers. Let's see if they have flares. I see a, I see a flare to the left. All right, there's a flare ahead to the left, and it is... There it is, bearing 300. I wish there was a button. Go to attack map, go to the navigation map. I wish there was a way you could just point and say navigate to this point. That'd be sweet. So I need to make a 60 degree left turn. Probably takes me to that spot there. There's a marker. It's probably this marker. Let's use time compression. Get kind of close. Yes, that actually works. Sort of to the left of it. Probably starting to get close now, right? Yeah, it's still to my left. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Runner. Where did it go? Oh, I turned too far. Yes, sir. Runner. Two, zero. They're drifting or something. It sucks that the, the flare disappears past 8x, though. It really sucks. 
See, I'm already past this marker. I think he's drifting from the northeast to the southwest. And, and um, that's why he appeared to be drifting. But now that I'm behind him, he's not drifting and he's not on this mark anymore. So I could probably search southwest of all of these marks in the daytime and, and find the survivors. See if I can see the dude in the rain. I gotta have this up so I can see when I found him. That lights up yellow. You can usually see a little guy in the water. I think that's him right there. It is him. I see him. Yes, sir. Backstander. Yes, sir. Hope I don't kill him. Because he was directly in front of me. Yes, sir. Hard to port. Hard to port. Hard to port. Yes, sir. Rudder. Yes, sir. Pretty close to him. Trying to get the ship to stop. I've ordered reverse. It hasn't quite stopped yet. Let's see if I can find him. That's him right there. He's kind of swimming over towards me. He's rescued. Yes, sir. Rudder. Oh, yes, sir. All right, so we picked him up. And now... Let's see if we can find any more of these guys. Looking southwest of their icons. This guy's been rescued. I'm standard speed, following the plotted course. You know what, I don't need guys on the guns. We have air superiority here. There haven't been any vals lately. Let's look around, see if we see any flares on the horizon, which I don't. What a night. I miss gaming at night. I'm surprised to have energy tonight, man. I'm tired, but... I wonder if these radar, if my regular radar finds these guys or not. I'll let it run and see if my radar operator says, Guy in the water, or some weird shit. S Racing Man, have a good night. You better sleep this one off. When you wake up in the morning, you can go look and see what you did to your eye rating. <laughs> Not to mention your safety rating. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I bet you wake up to protests. You'll be playing Silent Hunter tomorrow afternoon and you find out you can't get into your iRacing account. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. If it's un unofficial, then probably everybody is just having fun and don't care. I don't want to all stop. Did I tell you to do Oh, I know why. Because I reached my uh, destination, my waypoint. So, as it turns out, there are very few of these I haven't explored yet, but... Single contact. Bearing two, five. Ooh, did new ones appear? That's what you have to watch for, the new ones you can get. What's this? You know, there's something over here. Let's go check that out. Single contact. Bearing three, 
If it's enemies to capture, single contact bearing one six nine long range. All right, there is something to the left. Look, a flare. Yes, sir. The head standard. Yes, sir. Let's go check out that flare. Work our way over to it at 8x. I'm maintaining a small amount of right rudder to keep them in front of me. So they definitely are drifting. Where did I end up here on the minimap? See, I'm, there's no markers where I'm going other than that. It's getting cold, man. I'm in my basement. much more of this is it going to make me do? You find the dude. I think I see him. God, it's such a pain to see him. Survivor rescued. Yep, and then his flare disappears. All right, standard speed. Yes, sir. Go ahead, standard. Let's look around. Are there any more flares in sight? Um, I was originally going this way, so let's go check that out. Okay, hang on a minute. Two more just appeared right here. There are enemy here. Single contact. Bearing two, two. This time I should be able to see flares up ahead. Yep, they're there. I see them. They're a little to the left. There's bunches of flares out there. I see another one on the horizon a little to the left of that. I gotta slow down and look for a minute. Oh, he's right there. Hang on a minute. Yes, sir. Backstander. Yes, sir. He'll be swimming towards me, so let's try to look and find him. I think I see him to the right side here. Yep. Aw, oh, man.
it sucks because every time you get him, the, the ship screws around a little bit. And then, there you go, I got him. Yes, sir. I'll stop. Yes. Where was the next one? There was another one out here to the left. And a little to the right. That thing was in the, all the wrong spot. All right, let's try to get out there. Trailing to the left. Let's go zero in on him. Yes, sir. Runner zero. Runner yes, sir. Single contact. Bearing. Six. One. Long range. If I can see the guy from here, I think you gotta be much closer. So, back to time compression. Buzz by it. No, he's he's close. He's close. Yes, sir. Backstander. Yes, sir. Where are you, fella? I know we're close to you. Did I miss him? No, he's still there. coming towards me. He's to the right side, I thought. That's the left. That's the right. That's behind the right. There we go. Where are you out there? There he is. Yes, sir. Survivor rescued. Yeah. Okay, I'm rescuing survivors left and right. I got the whole U.S. Army Air Force on board at this point. I mean, when does it end? Yes, sir. Go to that location. Bearing one long range single contact. Bearing zero long range. A few little blue guys here. Let's look around and see if I can see anything. Any flares? Oh, did I see a flare out there? No, I don't think so. Yes, I did. To my right. Is that where that is? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Hard to starboard. Yes, sir. Kind of using the guns because they have a different perspective. 
Where did it go? I know it was off to the right. There it is. To the right would be 90-ish. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There it is. This is insane, man. And a thunderstorm and everything else. Man, midships. We'll go 32x for a little bit. Because I know it's way out there. Then we'll slow it down. It's still way out there. I'm still pointed at it, most importantly. A little bit to the right. That's okay, though. It's still in front of me enough to see it. Starting to get close. Yes, sir. Runner one three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Runner five. Yes, sir. Quit swimming away. I'm trying to help you. Where's the dude? There's a little dude out there somewhere. Single contact. Bearing. Gotta find the dude. There's the dude. Rescued. Well, um, I did see another one. No, that was a star. Grabbed my eye, but. Turn to course. Oh, look, it's done. Let's go to radio. Lifeguard duty complete. No new orders. Let's take these guys home, man. Um, there's a lot of activity here, I'll tell you that. Oh, my goodness. So that was an interesting twist, an interesting variation on the theme. Let's go south out of the area at first. I could go to Manus Island. Then around this way. Nah, I like Mioso Wendy. Okay, um... Single contact. Bearing. One. I wonder if standard speed, I, probably, I should have enough fuel to make it. That's not that many miles. 1,600 nautical miles, that's nothing. I'll just maintain standard speed. Let me ask radar contact radar. Oh, you know what I gotta do here? Let's do something here, just in case. Let's save... Exfil, because we're trying to exfil this area. Single contact. 
kind of wish I could turn off that radar. This radar is not what's detecting that. I can turn that radar off. I'll take a quick look in case there's more flares. Because they're kind of sailing by a little blue marker. Single contact. Bearing one, eight, two, long range. Just on the off chance. There's a another hostage to, or not hostage, but I'm thinking Counter Strike now. Hostage rescued. Should I play Counter Strike? I used to be good at it. It just seems different now. Like you gotta stop, wait, let the gun sit there for a minute, and then shoot, and someday it'll be accurate. Otherwise, then it just sprays bullets all over the place. It's really stupid. Run I mean, really stupid. Oh, look at it, it cleared up. One, eight, three, long range. And look at. There's a rescue right to the left. Yes, sir. Hard to port. Yes, sir. I'm going to approach him so that he's in the, the glare of the moon. Yes sir. yes, sir. So you guys can see what downed airmen look like in World War II. Jeez, he's hauling ass. Look at him. He just doesn't want to be rescued. He's like, screw you, I'm I'm Audi 5000. See you bitches later. And he's screaming across the ocean out there. Alright, let's see if I can see dude now. Yes, sir. I'll stop. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Where, you at? Where are you, dude? There's always a little dude here. Yes, sir. Back slow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back emergency. Where's dude? There's supposed to be a dude here. It's easier to find in the rainstorm. I can't see shit. Hang on. I just had it. I don't see dude, but this lit up. Ah, man. Pick up dude. Survivor rescued. Yes, sir. A head standard. Yes, sir. Yeah, one for the road, chat. This is going to be cool when I get back to port. I can only imagine. I'm going to crash dive. I don't know if those are friend or foe. And it is 0449 hours out. Look at how early the sun rises in this spot on the Pacific Ocean. That's uh, quite remarkable. Let's slow it down to two knots to save battery. Try to get through the day. I'll at least go till uh, maybe 10 a.m. We'll try to surface at 8 a.m. More aircraft out of Guam. He missed a couple of bombers. Yes. All right, we'll crash dive. This just sucks. Don't worry, we'll own Guam soon enough. Yes, and time compression. We'll surface at three in the afternoon. Yes, sir. And we'll check sea state. Head standard. Let's do a save. We'll overwrite Xville. We made some progress. A head standard. Yes. Let's try to get this boat home. Is my radar on? No, it's not. How come they just keep coming? It's so stupid, man. I mean, if I was near an island or one of their bases or something, that would make more sense. But I'm in flat out the middle of nowhere. Yeah, 
God, here they come again. Yep, of course, more planes. It's so monotonous. They should have did something way different than this in play testing. I don't know how it got to this point. Seven. Yep, there are planes right there when I try to surface to see what's out there. I'll slow to two knots and I'll stay down all day. It don't matter. Since I'm safe right now, let's save and overwrite. So I have a little checkpoint in case something happens. Which I'm sure it won't. Oh good, I'm making it through the day without air attack. look at something by the way yeah i'm just i haven't found any shipping it's my watch trying to tell me it's i have my um my apple watch slash iphone or whatever it's set up to tell me when it's bedtime you know a little bedtime reminder siege of infall lifted japanese forces withdraw farther east patrol off philippines and engage enemy shipping no i don't think so I do have new orders. Technically, I could go to the Philippines. It's not far from here, but we're done for the night, man. I'm actually going to return to base. I'm going to end this patrol and kill whatever I find along the way. I've got over 100,000 tons sunk on this war patrol. Let's refit. Refit complete. Then you go here kick off a reload, then you refit again, and it just goes ahead, restocks that slot, everything's hunky-dory, we're full of torpedoes, it's good, it, you know, even when you're returning to base, you want to refit, because otherwise, when you get to base, you have to go through and carefully curate exactly which torpedo tubes you want what kind of torpedo in, <clears throat> but if you come in with a full load like this, you'll be docked with a full load, and you won't have to mess with it, big time saver. Now I need to cap. I got to uh, plot another course. Let's go here, 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 here. That's fine there. Here, 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 here. And you'll notice I always plot a course that swoops through and goes around. If you abruptly end your course here and you're on that menu pops up saying, hey, do you want to dock here? Your ship just goes straight and it will ground and destroy itself in the, in the beach. At least in Silent Hunter 3, and I think it does it here too, so... Just we can stay out of the shallow waters and kind of get away from friendly ships on well, this route see sound contact I'm hearing friendly ships that are patrolling around me so windy but... this has been an amazing story five hours man it feels like ten minutes I mean it's just picking up the survivors was kind of boring and there was a period of time there that I hadn't sunk any ships or anything until I went into Saipan Harbor and just absolutely demolished base. Holy cow. Eight ships sunk at port. Pack news received. British retake coma in Burma. Good job, Tommies. This war is sort of um, making progress. It's well into June.
there have been times I've tried to come through this this section of the Indian Ocean and just had to keep diving away from planes, diving away from planes. It was a drag. Let's go check that out. I'll save an overwrite attack, just in case there's bad news there, but I'm sure there won't be. My guess is friendly, but I'm going to go investigate. Yep, it's friendly. Yes, sir. It's a Liberty Cargo. Liberty ships are super common. Well, they're super common, but also when you play Silent Hunter 3, Liberty ships are your primary target. That's that's the main freighter that you would encounter in that game. Because you're a German submarine and you're after allied shipping and the Liberty ships were what won the war. It, you go Google search it or maybe even find a nice YouTube video about the Liberty ships. They're it's utterly amazing what was accomplished because of those ships and what was accomplished in terms of how they were able to build so many of them so fast. The Germans couldn't, could, they couldn't even sink enough of them. I mean, never in the whole war. There's an amazing story behind the Liberty ships. Pack news received. What happened? What happened? Greeted as liberators, American forces parade through Cherbourg as Nazis run. June 26, 1944. Yeah. We're almost home to Perth Fremantle, folks, and what a war patrol it has been. What a stream this has been. I've really enjoyed it. I missed a couple of nights. You know, I just get so tired, especially after doing race control for the Porsche Club on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And by the way, let's end patrol. Wow. Now I want to check my numbers. This is These are staggering numbers. One fifteen five ninety three with twenty nine ships sunk. I'm dead nuts on my bookkeeping has been perfect. I'd probably make a good cashier somewhere. These are insane numbers. I have to add that number, that one hundred fifteen thousand five hundred ninety three, to the previous total of nine hundred fifty thousand eight hundred fifty two tons. I now have a career total of 1,066,445 tons sunk. Nine aircraft. I can't even remember when I had shot down a plane, but I did. And then 216 previous victories. I have to add 29 to that. And I have a new total of 245 victories. Absolutely incredible. And I will be going into my 17th War Patrol. I'm updating the overlay, folks. Give me two seconds. Now let's see what other awards and decorations I get. That's going to be pretty incredible. Got a million tonnage. That's insane. Lieutenant Commander Richard O'Kane, Commanding Officer, USS, well, I'm not in the Gar, I'm in the Balao, but okay. For extraordinary heroism as Commanding Officer, 
of the USS Balao during the 16th War Patrol. The Navy Board of Decorations and Medals awards the Victory Cross to Lieutenant Commander Richard O'Kane. I'm dude, for, why don't you make me an admiral? I mean, come on. His inspiring leadership and aggressiveness are in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Submarine Force. As we expected, the Japanese concentrated two fleets west of the Philippines in order to engage the U.S. invading force. Prepared for the encounter with the Imperial Japanese fleet, Task Force 58 moved west of Saipan. Again, the fleets themselves never met each other, the battle being fought by carrier-based aircraft. Fortunately, mm -hmm. the air offensive launched by the Japanese cost them most of their planes. The superior training of U.S. air crew was apparent, as besides shooting down hundreds of enemy planes, they managed to sink one carrier and inflict damage to three others. Our submarines took their share in this action, sinking two other carriers. The Japanese fleet was basically crushed and forced to retreat. To complete the victory, our ground forces soon took control of Saipan. The invasion of the Marianas Islands was a total success. June 28th, we plug that date in to the overlay. orders okay so here's how this goes i like to come here and click on the submarine and just browse through this list of uh, technologies to see if any new technologies have emerged you know when i first started the 16th war patrol i had just added a 5 inch 25 cal gun which is a new mount and I really haven't played with it too much, so that's something that I'm going to want to do at some point. I still have the 40 millimeters fore and aft, which are amazing, especially for sinking the junks and the um, sampans, the fishing boats. I haven't had an opportunity to engage with my deck gun. It's interesting that this picture that they show of it shows my deck gun mount, stern mounted, but I've actually got it bow mounted. And I really wish I could have this bow mounted gun and a stern gun, but I mean, in real life you could, but this isn't allowing me to do that for whatever reason. So that's that. There's no new technologies here. I maxed out on that. I've got the best of the best. I like to look through the torpedoes to see if there's any new torpedoes available, different, you know, versions of them. And as it turns out that there aren't, I could go all electric. That's something that I could do. The Mark 27 homing torpedo, that's I've already got those. Yeah, there's no new torpedo technology available, but what I think I'm going to do <clears throat> is get rid of these steam torpedoes and put on board... Ooh, the submarine is full, it says. Want to let me get rid of this torpedo and give it back? There it goes. And they cost me 200 renown, but I've got 20,000 renown to burn, and there's nothing I can ever spend that renown on, so... We are going to go to sea for my next mission with all electric torpedoes. I have to unload all these steamers first. These are free. The Mark 23 steam torpedo is an excellent torpedo. It corrected all the early war problems that we had with the Mark 14 torpedoes, which um, they're still available. If somebody decides they want to go out there with them, that, that seems pointless, but um, yeah, I'm going to take these electric torpedoes here. We're going to be all electric. Let me get rid of these steamers.
Hopefully there's enough in stock. They cost you renown when you originally equip these. But I notice that... Well, I don't even know if I'm sure about this, but I, I think when you refit, you get these torpedoes for free. Hopefully there's enough electro electric torpedoes in stock. It really sucks that there's a certain number of torpedoes of a particular kind, but really all you have to do... It's just go refit, and I think it refills them. I don't know if it does that or not. It won't. Actually, if you depart without reserves and you go refit, it won't give you new reserves. It gives you a carbon copy of what you left port with originally. So I'm sure I'm going to find enough electric torpedoes. It's just a drag. You have to sit here and mess with it. You have to keep scrolling around until you find them. I need one more. Excellent. We're going to see with all electric torpedoes. Mark 18s. And then crew. I have promotions. There's just... They don't... I have so many promotions I can't even promote all these guys. Because they don't, you know... Everybody that has the experience, I have an available promotion for them. Gosh, look at these guys. They're all freaking officers. And petty officers. This is a stacked crew. There aren't even any sailors left. They're all officers and petty officers. <laughs> And awards. Holy cow. Four medals of valor. Five, what? Five, six patrol stars. I like to spread them out through all the different areas of the ship. To, you know, boost the skill and proficiency of, of, you know, each section of the boat. This crew is so decorated, even when I get these decorations, there's I almost don't even have guys available to, to pin them on their chest. <laughs> Okay. No more medals, and I don't need to recruit anybody, that's for sure. So, let me save in port. And I'm not going to play this through, folks. It's time for bed. But I am going to go to sea really quick, get get them going, and I'll do another save while out to sea. We're going to the South China Sea.
So we're on our way for my 17th War Patrol, which I'll continue tomorrow night. I will say this. I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. Chat's been a little bit active. Got to see some, some friends and cool people. Appreciate you guys coming to hang out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, I'm going to be back tomorrow night. Yes, sir. Saturday is kind of normally a traditional day for me to do kind of an all-day stream, but I can't. I got, I got some errands to run tomorrow afternoon. And then Sunday, when I would also do some daytime streaming, I'm going to be doing race control for the Porsche Club of America that is having a six hour endurance race so I will be at the computers doing six hours of race control on Sunday but I will be back Saturday night and Sunday night to um, continue with my patrols it is July 20 1944 the war is coming to a close we're making good progress there so update that date than halfway through the last full year of the war. 1945 was not a full year. It's close, though. It wasn't until August that we settled things here in the Pacific Theater. So. Alright. Let's take a look. Just take an inventory of things. Appreciate it. I hope to see you guys tomorrow night. You guys, if I don't see you for the rest of the weekend, have a great weekend. We're getting into the weekend now. It's um, officially Saturday morning, at least in my time zone. It's almost 2 o'clock in the morning, so I'm going to go get some Z's. We'll catch you guys tomorrow night, man. Have a good one. See y'all. Bye.